In the royal capital, a boy was buying candy. He is Zhao Jinyu, an ordinary reincarnator. But his current situation is not good. He can sense bloodlust form his both, left and right side, those to man, attacks to kill Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu dropped his money. He bent down to pick up his money. At the same time when those killers attack him, both of those killers were surprised. They collide with each other and died. Zhao Jinyu was not even surprised because it was happening every other day. He have to experience an attempt at being assassinated every day, even though he is a teenager. Well, it's thanks to him being reincarnated into a good life. His dad is an outstanding founding minister who is helping the emperor to win over half the territory, the Centennial Grand Duke. But after the late emperor passed away, the current emperor felt that his dad's achievement could topple him. That's why the emperor wants to end his dad's bloodline. Like just now, even he is wanted dead. There's not a single soul in this street even in broad daylight. There will be a lot of hidden surprises. Zhao Jinyu was walking while eating his candy. Suddenly a knife passed his head, then a knife passed his chest. In his previous life, since he joined the Taiyi sect, even if he have been reborn as a child now, it's more than enough to deal with an enemy of this level. But if he deal with it himself, he will end up exposing his real power, which will attract stronger assassins. That's why he can only make it seem as if it's them getting into an accident by themselves. But Zhao Jinyu thought that the things can't keep going like this. Does he have to go up the mountain to train hard like in his past life? Is there no way to end this once and for all? Zhao Jinyu find a solution that, if the emperor is afraid that Jinyu family will threaten him, then all Zhao Jinyu have to do is prove him wrong, don't he? Zhao Jinyu smiles because he've decided. From today onwards, he'll become a useless person. Few months later, Zhao Jinyu was sleeping till late morning. A housekeeper comes running to wake up his young master. Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu wakes up. He comes out of his room and asks housekeeper, Is it time for lunch? Housekeeper told him that Eunuch Li from the palace brought an imperial edict. In just a few months, Zhao Jinyu became the capital's no one good for nothing Zhao Jinyu. He asked House Kipper that, What's there to worry about? They are here for his dad. It's nothing to do with him. Zhao Jinyu goes there and saw that Eunuch Li was reading the imperial edict, Emperor said in edict, that he've heard that the eldest son of Duke Ding Bang, Zhao Jinyu, is warm, kind, and has a good appearance. As the third princess is already sixteen years old, it's a suitable time to get married. By giving my blessing, he shall betroth the third princess to Zhao Jinyu. End of the decree. Zhao Jinyu was surprised. Zhao Jinyu's father, the duke, received the decree and said that he shall gratefully accept it. Duke started crying, saying that his majesty thinks about him so much. This must be what people call giving one's unending attention. It's hard to suppress his tears, Eunuch Li told Duke that his majesty is asking the young master to meet him in the palace tomorrow after the morning assembly. Please do not be late. Duke said sure. Eunuch Li said that he shall take Haya leave. When Yunch Li left, Duke Zhao was very angry. Zhao Jinyu asked his dad that, What's happening? Is he going to sell Jinyu off like this? Duke Zhao said that, Without becoming relatives, do he really think that stupid emperor will let them off? He just want to protect Zhao Jinyu. Duke Zhao was very angry. He threw the decree and shouted that, This stupid emperor is unbelievable. To make that idiot princess marry Zhao Jinyu, he must be pulling this on purpose. Zhao Jinyu asked his dad that, Who is the idiot princess? Duke Zhao told Zhao Jinyu that she's that naturally born mentally incapable, which makes her unable to take on the Imperial's Ji surname, and has to follow her birth mother's surname, Mu Luoxue. Zhao Jinyu was little surprised when he hears her future wife's name, Mu Luoxue, Zhao Jinyu. Remember that, she's not some idiot princess, she's acting like an idiot to protect her life. Moreover, this Mu Luoxue succeeded in rebelling later on, and used cruel methods to reorganize the entire Imperial's laws. An out-and-out -out tyrant by that time as a remnant of the previous dynasty. Won't he have to fight with his wife? What's more, she's beautiful. The thing is, she's still young now. There are still ways to help her, to prevent her from making the same mistakes, such as having him rebel first, walking her path. Then she won't be able to do it anymore. Zhao Jinyu said, Dad, let us rebel. He was thinking that, he is a genius. Duke Zhao looks at Zhao Jinyu with disappointment. It gives him the chills. Duke Zhao shouted, Stupid son, don't you run away. I promise to not beat you to death. Zhao Jinyu runs away saying that he was just joking. At the royal palace, 
Mu Luo Shui asked that did her father betrothed her to someone. A imperial consort was kneeling in front of her. She said yes, princess. Imperial consort said to Mu Luo Shui that she tried to talk to his majesty. But his majesty. Mu Luo Shui asked her why did she talk. Imperial consort blow down and said that it's her fault for being a busybody. Imperial consort was very angry thinking that she is an imperial consort, why he is acting like a servant. Mu Luo Shui asked her if she is sure the other person is the son of Duke Ding Bang, Zhao Jinyu. Imperial consort said yes, that's right. Mu Luo Shui turned around. Imperial consort was very scared thinking that this crazy girl is so shocked. Did she decided to pull everyone down and die together? Mu Luo Shui was blushing. She was embarrassed thinking that the future heavenly martial immortal is her husband. Mu Luo Shui thought that there wasn't any fate between them in the previous life. But there's a marriage with him in this life. But around this time during the previous life, shouldn't Zhao Jin Yu be at the Jade Mountain Peak training at Tai Yi Sect? Tai Yi Sect, the world's best immortal sect, its history goes back far longer than the Zhou Dynasty's imperial court. Even the current emperor has to be respectful towards the Tai Yi Sect. Mu Luo Shui was shouted thinking that, but for some reason, in this life, Zhao Jinyu hasn't joined the Taiyi sect. But what if he believed the rumors that are spreading, and has actually thought that Mu Luo Shui, a naturally born idiot, and decided to escape marriage by joining the Taiyi sect? Then won't she miss the opportunity to be with him again? Mu Luo Shui was very angry. She smiles like a crazy person. She thought that, if Zhao Jinyu joined the Taiyi sect, then what's the point in becoming immortal? She just have to think of a way to end the Taiyi sect. When Imperial Consort saw Mu Luo Shui making a scary face, she thought that Mu Luo Shui must be thinking about something terrifying. Because she is marrying a useless piece of trash, she must be super angry. Imperial Consort said to her that, It's a marriage granted by His Majesty, please don't be angry. She was thinking that Mu Luo Shui can cause all the trouble she want once she get married, just don't do it right now and involve her. Mu Luo Shui said, Angry. She asked, Why should she be angry? Imperial Consort was confused. Mu Luo Shui seats down and said that she want to meet Zhao Jinyu tomorrow. She asked Imperial Consort to make the arrangement. Imperial Consort said that, as the palace rules, they both are not allowed to meet each other before marriage. Mu Luo Shui looks at Imperial Consort angrily and asks her, Does she mean this isn't appropriate? Imperial Consort was scared, she said. It's totally appropriate. Why wouldn't it be? Mu Luo Shui put her hand on Imperial Consort and said, well done. She goes to the window and looks at the full moon. She was very happy. The next day, Duke Zhao goes to the imperial palace to greet his majesty. He is Zhou Dynasty's emperor. Ji Xinghe. Ji Xinghe said that, Uncle is here someone. Bring him a seat. Duke Zhao said that, This humble official doesn't dare to. Duke Zhao knows that, This stupid emperor is trying to set him up. Emperor said to Duke that, The late emperor and Duke Ding Bang are like brothers following the hierarchy, having him to calling Duke Zhao uncle shouldn't be too much. Emperor brings out a paper and told Duke to take a look. Emperor said that, these contents in the memorial are all impeached towards uncle. Duke Zhao was to shouted. He was lost of words. Emperor tear apart those paper and said to Duke that, he have suppressed all of this for Duke. Duke Zhao said, thank you lord. Duke Zhao was very angry. He knows that, this stupid emperor was himself who ordered the officials to suppress Duke, making them nitpick his mistakes. Emperor asked Duke Zhao that, where is his son Zhao Jinyu? Duke Zhao said to Emperor that, yesterday night, Duke had an argument with that child, and in the heat of the moment, Zhao Jinyu ran away. Suddenly a servant announced that, the Duke Dingbang's son is here. Duke Zhao while turning around said that yesterday he even warned him to arrive on time. It seems he still didn't dare to be rude towards his majesty. Zhao Jinyu was too drunken and was dancing weirdly, mumbling something. Duke Zhao was almost died to she him that way. Duke Zhao grabbed Zhao Jinyu with his collar and said, Shameful, sober up for a while. Emperor looks so serious he said that. Zhao Jinyu still dares to go to a brothel and enjoy pleasure. Even after Emperor granted him a marriage, he sure is the capital's no one good for nothing. Emperor looks at Zhao Jinyu. He was dancing. Emperor smiles thinking that, it's good that he is a good for nothing. Emperor said that, young and frivolous, Zhao Jinyu sure is romantic. But after the marriage, he is not allowed to act like this again. Emperor told Duke to let's end it here for today. He still have documents that he need to go through. Duke Zhao was supporting Zhao Jinyu to stand, he said, at his majesty's command. Outside the palace, 
Duke Zhao was carrying Zhao Jinyu on the back. He pinched Zhao Jinyu and asked him, till when is he going to keep his act? Zhao Jinyu said to Duke that he should continue the whole show if he is going to act. Who knows if there's a spy from the emperor nearby? Duke Zhao asked Zhao Jinyu to tell him the truth. Where did he go last night? Zhao Jinyu said that he went to Green Willow Pavilion. He even accidentally gave a beating to the Ministry of War's second son. Zhao Jinyu told the Ministry of War will definitely involve Duke in it. Please be ready. Duke Zhao covered his face and disappointed. He said that. Sometimes even he not sure if Zhao Jinyu really a good for nothing, or if he is just acting. Zhao Jinyu pull out his sword and said that he need to kill someone tonight. He said he is serious. Duke Zhao ask him who do we want to kill. When Zhao Jinyu didn't reply, he looks back and saw that Zhao Jinyu was not on Duke's back. At night, a black Shawad was approaching a building in Imperial Palace. That was Zhao Jinyu who was wearing the Nightwalk's clothes. Zhao Jinyu jumped for the tree and was flying in the sky. Zhao Jinyu was thinking that Mu Luo Shui is a tyrant made from chaos around the world. And the culprit for starting the chaos is in the Tianyi Pavilion. Zhao Jinyu grabbed the back of his sword and directed in the palace direction, and said that, although you haven't done anything till now, but still please die right here. Zhao Jinyu throws his sword towards the Imperial Palace. Zhao Jinyu's sword goes towards the palace. Zhao Jinyu's attack was too powerful. It destroyed all the barrier of the palace and makes a huge explosion. Zhao Jinyu thought that the experts in the palace should be here any moment. It will be troublesome if any of them suspect him. So he decided to retreat. Zhao Jinyu looks from apart and said, as expected from the chaplain Tianyazi, it seems like Zhao Jinyu didn't manage to get rid of him. Sure enough, it's not realistic to directly solve the problem from its root cause. But this blow should be enough to make Tianyazi lie down for a few months. With this, he won't be able to go to the opening of Hidden Immortal Summit that will happen two months later. When the time comes, Emperor Ji Xinghe won't have any half-immortal around him that he can mobilize, then the chaos from previous life will be delayed for at least two years. In addition, yesterday at the brothel, Zhao Jinyu happened to inquire that, in his previous life around this time, due to Mu Luoshu practicing poisonous arts, she was locked up in the Supreme Court's jail. It turns out that she was framed by those scumbag from the Huang clan. Zhao Jinyu said that this time, he'll just kidnap Mu Luo Shui into his house, personally keeping watch on her. Then she will be absolutely safe. In Yongning Palace, Imperial Consort was walking. Someone come from her back, calling her sister. Thay Man grabbed her leg and said, Sizer, please get revenge for me. Imperial Consort asked him who is he. That man said that he is her brother, Huang Xingsheng, that Zhao Jinyu is unreasonable. He almost beat him to death. Imperial Consort said that, even if that good-for-nothing is overbearing, there's still no need to beat someone up for no reason. She asked her brother to tell her about all of it in full detail. Huang Xingsheng said that, when he was discussing something major at the brothel, Zhao Jinyu accidentally overheard him. Imperial Consort gets angry and asks him, what do we mean? Huang Xingsheng pull out something from his bag. He show it to Imperial Consort and ask her what does she think this is. Imperial Consort take it from him, and ask him this thing, where did he get it from? Imperial Consort looks at that box and thought that, why is the poisonous insect that she's secretly breeding with him? Except for fighting for favor, she was breeding this poisonous insect in the palace for emergencies. But then it got found out by Mu Luokshui. That's why Imperial Consort keep getting ordered around by her. If by any chance this incident gets disclosed, and is found out by the Emperor. Imperial Consort is dead for sure. Huang Xingsheng said to Imperial Consort that this was found in her warehouse. Imperial Consort grabbed him and asked him, What nonsense is he talking about? Huang Xingsheng said to her that, What he mean is, that she got deceived by that Mu Luo Shui. She is not an idiot. She was secretly practicing poison in the palace. Imperial Consort asked him, Do we think this is the third princess's? Huang Xingsheng said, Whose else if not hers? In this palace, only her white-haired foreign clan mother will know this kind of sorcery. Imperial Consort didn't say anything to him. Huang Xingsheng started crying. He said that, when he was discussing this with a few of his brothers at the brothel about how to breed poisonous insects as an opportunity to deal with Mu Luo Shui and Zhao Jinyu. At the same time, Zhao Jinyu overheard it. Imperial Consort thought that, indeed, in this situation, even if he have the chance to succeed in framing Mu Luo Shui, this little fox is very shrewd. She is afraid that Mu Luo Shui will pull Imperial Consort down together with her. Imperial Consort said to Huang Xingsheng that, This is not a small matter. She will make the decision later. He don't have to worry about it. 
A voice comes that, of course he is going to worry about it. Imperial consort looks behind and asks, Father, why are you here? Her father said, The things they both are talking about, he've heard all of it. He said that, Huang clan was supported by the emperor to control the Zhao clan. They are like water and fire, and now they have something on them. Why should not they use it? Imperial consort and her father. That can this really bring down the Zhao clan, there will be an acrimonious fallout. Her father said that, it won't be enough to bring them down. If not, they won't be called Zhao clan. But they have to prove that they are useful. If not, does she seriously think that the Zhao clan is the only one that the emperor is wary of? Imperial consort's father said to her, her that, the poisonous insect, it's her, isn't it? He told her that, whatever's the issue here, it should be fixed. Imperial consort was surprised. Imperial consort laughs and asks her father, what is he talking about? She said that, she swear that it's not hers, Oregon, else lightning shall strike down. Before she could complete her words, suddenly something like lightning bolt passed their house. Imperial consort and her father was shocked to see that lightning. In the palace, everyone started shouting that, it's an earthquake. Mu Luoxue was making tea. When she felt the earthquake, she knows that, this is not an earthquake. There are experts fighting each other. She thought that, to be able to cause this kind of shock, there's no more than three people in this palace. Xie wonder who is fighting. She thought that, are they just sounding out each other? Suddenly all the pressure's gone. Mu Luoxue said that, he don't think it will spread till here. Counting the days, it should be the time Huang Xingsheng comes and frames her. At this time in her previous life, thanks to Huang Yurong's dear brother, Mu Luo Shui ended up turning into a prisoner from a princess. Mu Luo Shui take out a bottle and said that she is going to get married this time, that's why. She dropped the things of the bottle into the tea and said that this cup of Yama tea will bring Huang Xingsheng to the afterlife. Suddenly a voice come outside of her room. It was Zhao Jinyu. He broke the door and said, Where is his wife whom he haven't married yet? At that moment, the future tyrant wife and immortal prince meets. Both of them were just looking at each other with blinking their eyes. Zhao Jinyu looks at Mu Luo Shui and thought, That cruel and brutal tyrant right now is just a docile girl who is acting dumb. Mu Luo Shu was looking at Zhao Jinyu and thinking, That unrivaled heavenly martial immortal, the one who doesn't care about the enemy outside, bursting into the palace only by himself and a sword, asking if she willing to go with him or not, is now a wanton and unrestrained good-for-nothing young master. In Mu Luoxue's point of view, Zhao Jinyu was looking too handsome to her. Zhao Jinyu picked up the pimu. Luoxue was making earlier, and said that, Your Highness is so considerate. She even prepared a cup of tea for him. Zhao Jinyu was drinking that tea. Mu Luoxue was looking at him thinking that, He looks so handsome even when drinking tea. Is this really something that she can see for free? Suddenly, Mu Luoxue realized Thay Zhao Jinyu is drinking tea. She tries to stop him, because there's poison in the tea. Mu Luoxue runs towards her to stop him, but she slipped and fall on Zhao Jinyu's arms. Zhao Jinyu said to her that they haven't gotten married yet, and she is already so aggressive. Mu Luoxue punches him. Mu Luoxue was too embarrassed. She was thinking that, why did Zhao Jinyu come at this time? She wanted to leave a good impression on Zhao Jinyu for the first meeting. She was thinking what should she do now. She couldn't thought of anything so she tries to run away from there. Zhao Jinyu grabbed her hand and asked her is she trying to run away after hitting someone. Zhao Jinyu asked Mu Luo Shui, does she think he'll let her off so easily? Zhao Jinyu goes near her and asks her, does your highness know who I am? Mu Luo Shui face turned red. She said yes. Zhao Jinyu grabbed her west. Mu Luo Shui asked him, what is she doing? Zhao Jinyu hold her and said that he is bringing his wife home to get married. On the other side, Emperor Ji Shinghe was standing on a cliff. A eagle comes and seat on his shoulder. Emperor asked his servant, Did he find out who it was? Servant said that he've told the subordinates to double their efforts. But those who came into the palace yesterday were only the Duke Ding Bang and his son. Emperor asked him that. What is Tian Yazi's situation right now? Servant told Emperor that there's no danger in Sir Chaplin's life. It's just the sword chi inside his body that is hard to get rid of. On their back, a white-haired man was trying to subdue the sword chi in his body. He was collecting all the chi in his chest to control it. Blood was coming out of his body. This man is the chaplain Tian Yazi. He is the one Zhao Jinyu attacked last night. Tian Yazi cleared blood from his mouth and said that there's nothing for the emperor to worry about. 
Emperor asked him that, the one that hurt him. Is he really that strong? Tianyazi told Emperor that, the one who attacked him is a mainland immortal. Tianyazi was completely at his mercy. Tianyazi said that, he is lucky that he is not dead, but his virtual spirit has been heavily damaged. The hidden immortal summit that will happen in two months later, it would be difficult. Emperor asked him, do he know the sex cultivation used by that lowly person? Tianyazi said to Emperor that, he think the other person is an expert from the Taiyi sect. Emperor gets serious when he hears Taiyi sect name. He said that, if it's Taiyi sect, then he will have to go ask them what this is about. A servant comes running and said to Emperor, that there's a problem. Young Master Zhao took away the third princess. Emperor turned around and said, it's that goddamn good for nothing again. There's not even a little courtesy in him. Emperor asked that servant that, there's so many experts in the palace, can't they at least handle Zhao Jinyu who doesn't even know martial arts? That servant said to the emperor that, the inner guard doesn't dare to hurt young master Zhao, and the young master also said that whoever dared to block him, would be noted down in his notebook. When Zhao Jinyu was running away with Mu Luo Shui, some guard tries to stop him, Zhao Jinyu shouted at them that, anyone who dares to come up, Zhao Jinyu will make their life miserable later on, Mu Luo Shui was happy but she was acting like an idiot. Zhao Jinyu smiles like a devil. He points his brush at those guards. Guards were scared. Zhao Jinyu write down their name in his notebook. He said to them that they all are dead. Guards started acting like Zhao Jinyu is too strong and they can't take it. They are dying. Zhao Jinyu looks proud of himself. He put his hand on Muluokshui's shoulder and said, Time to go, little idiot. Muluokshui pushed him and told him to don't call her a little idiot. She was angry. Zhao Jinyu said, All right, all right. I won't do it then. Zhao Jinyu looks at her and thought that her silly look right now is so cute, even though she's acting. Mu Luo Shui was angry and embarrassed. She was thinking that her hair got messed up. Zhao Jinyu's such a blockhead right now, even though he's only acting. Zhao Jinyu, hold Mu Luo Shui's hand and ask her to come on. Let's go home. Both of them arrived at Zhao resident. Zhao Jinyu said, Dad, I'm home. A arrow comes toward Zhao Jinyu with a ladder. Zhao Jinyu grabbed that arrow. He said that. He just came back home. Dad don't have to prepare gifts. He asked Duke Zhao. What's this? Zhao Jinyu opened that ladder. Zhao Jinyu is an expert in making trouble was written on that ladder. Duke Zhao shouted at Zhao Jinyu that the fact that he kidnapped the third princess is known throughout that whole imperial court. Can he imagine how many complaints those civil and military officers will write about Duke? Zhao Jinyu laughed and said that he is honored to be able to receive this title. First of all, he want to thank himself for all the hard work throughout the years. Duke asked him, is he even taking advantage of this opportunity to make jokes? Duke saw that Mu Luo Shui was also with Zhao Jinyu. He said to Zhao Jinyu that he'll leave the problems regarding Zhao Jinyu aside first. Duke Zhao officer his greetings to Mu Luo Shui. Duke looks at her and thought that it's as exactly as rumors outside. The third princess is devastatingly beautiful. Too bad she was naturally born specially abled. Mu Luo Shui was hiding behind Zhao Jinyu. Duke said to Mu Luo Shui that he have prepared some light refreshments for her. He told housekeeper to lead the way for her highness. Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luo Shui to go with housekeeper. When Mu Luo Shui left, Duke asked Zhao Jinyu to tell him the truth. What did he do yesterday? Zhao Jinyu was looking at flowers. He told Duke that he couldn't kill him. Duke Zhao was surprised to hear that. He asked Zhao Jinyu that what kind of person is he that even Zhao Jinyu didn't manage to kill? Duke Zhao knows that Zhao Jinyu might be dissolute, but his martial arts is second to none. Even Duke can't fathom his true strength. Last year the southern border's frontier reported an emergency. The witchcraft clan sent forces to invade them. The one defending the southern border is his eldest daughter, Zhao Jinyu's elder sister, Zhao Ruxuang. At first the situation was in a little crisis, but after Zhao Jinyu's arrival, the situation got quickly resolved. Zhao Jinyu even brought back the tooth of the witchcraft clan's strongest sacred beast totem, Tao Wu. Only then did Duke realize that his strength was just a facade. Zhao Jinyu told Duke that, It was just a little trouble, don't mention it. Duke asked Zhao Jinyu to then talk about the matter regarding the third princess. Did he know the emperor deliberately let him bring the third princess back in acquiescence? but he's going to send a bunch of servants to their house stating that it's in accordance with the imperial household's identity. They don't even need to guess, in these people, there's definitely spies from the emperor. Zhao Jinyu said to Duke, that there's going to be bugs coming to their house, 
He'll deal with all these. Zhao Jinyu asked Duke that. Have you ever thought about getting rid of the old yellow fish from the Huang clan? Duke was surprised. Duke said, Huang Yu, the Ministry of War. If he is so easy to deal with, why will Duke even leave him alone? Emperor said that the Imperial Consort Huang is getting affection nowadays, and they even have the Emperor backing them up. They are at the apex of their power. Zhao Jinyu pick a rose and ask Duke that. What if he say he got information about Imperial Consort Huang practicing poison in the palace? Duke ask, practicing poison, does she even dare to? Zhao Jinyu smiles and said that, not only does she dare to, she even wants to frame Mu Luoxue and make false charges on the Zhao clan. Duke Zhao gets angry. He said that. She's just a little brat. How can she know how to practice poison and even attempt to involve their Zhao clan into it? While leaving Zhao, Jin Yu said to Duke that, Duke don't have to worry about this matter. He asked Duke to leave it to him. Zhao Jin Yu goes to his room and put his sword down. He ring a bell and a bird comes flying after hearing that ring. It was a white blue sparrow. It seats on Zhao Jin Yu hand. Zhao Jin Yu called it Blue Sparrow. That blue sparrow is a little girl. She called Zhao Jin Yu, as the high priest, am to ask him is there any instructions from the high priest. That girl said to Zhao Jin Yu that she heard that Zhao Jin Yu is going to marry the idiot princess perhaps did Zhao Jin Yu call her here to finish her up. Zhao Jin Yu gets angry. He grabbed that bird, and with a serious face he said to her that if she dare touch Mu Luo Shui, he'll kill her and her whole clan. That sparrow girl was very scared, because she knows that high priest is really mad. She remembers that. Back then, Zhao Jinyu came to the clan and beat everyone into submission. He had the same expression when the nine-headed divine dragon had eight of its heads cut off. She said to Zhao Jinyu that it's her fault for overstepping. Zhao Jinyu told her to do not repeat the same mistake again. Zhao Jinyu told her to don't worry, since her clan and Zhao Jinyu have allied in a friendly manner. And he became their clan's second in command. He won't treat her unfairly in place of listening to his orders and doing the work properly. She didn't say anything. Zhao Jinyu asked her that. Which elder from her clan is in charge of the believers in the capital? Sparrow Girl said that. It's the ninth elder. She said that. The capital is heavily guarded. It has always been the responsibility of the ninth elder who is the expert in concealing. But ever since Zhao Jinyu became the high priest, the ninth elder has been withdrawn. But the believers register is still well preserved. Zhao Jinyu asked her that. Is the believers in the capital are going to follow my orders from now on, Sparrow Girl said. That's right, as he order. Zhao Jinyu said. Good, if that's the case, Huang Yurong is definitely recorded in that register right. Sparrow Girl said. Yes, Huang Yurong had the highest development standing among the believers when the ninth elder was still in the capital. Zhao Jinyu said. Well done, that stupid emperor must have never expected that his beloved consort is a believer of the witch. Leaving alone the resentment between Zhao and Huang clan, she will be a good pawn to use. Zhao Jinyu asked Sparrow Girl that. Did she bring his unmanifested poisonous insect? Sparrow Girl said, yes. She split out a yellow poisonous insect from her mouth on Zhao Jinyu's hand. Zhao Jinyu was disgusted to see that he told her that he won't eat it right now. Sparrow Girl said, then I'll seal it up. She shallow that again. She said to Zhao Jinyu that he should let her know if he needs it any time. Zhao Jinyu was to shock to see that. On the other hand, Housekeeper left Mu Luoxue in her room. Housekeeper was very happy. He was thinking that the third princess is just as the rumor mentioned. So cute. After he left, Mu Luoxu thought, the interior of the palace is heavily guarded. For many years, she'd been acting like an idiot. Only then did she manage to have some magic devices by her side. But then that blockhead husband suddenly took her away. She said, Thank God I bought some of them with me. Mu Luoxue looks in a mirror and asks, UNG, where have you guys reached? In that mirror, a white hair girl appear. Her name is UNG. UNG called Mu Luoxue, Spirit Lord. UNG told Mu Luoxue that the clan member and she have arrived near the capital. They will be able to meet up with the Lord in a few days. Mu Luoxue asks her if there's anything else. UNG told Mu Luoxue that the Chalcedoni mine that she told them before has been occupied by another. Mu Luoxue was to shock to hear that. Mu Luoxue thought that, that Chalcedoni mine is at the innermost part of the imperial household's hunting ground. It should only be found out by people seven or eight years later. How can it be occupied by others first? Wenji told Mu Luoxue that, this Chalcedoni mine is very important to their clan. She said that, those barbarians from the southern border took it. Mu Luoxue said, southern border, 
Is it the Witchcraft Clan? UNG told Mulu Oshue that those people that occupied the Chalcedony Mine must be the Witchcraft Clan. The sorcery they use is completely different from the Central Plains monks. She definitely won't mix them up. Mulu Oshue thought that the Witchcraft Clan has always had people hiding in the capital. If it's them, then there's a chance that they got to know earlier about the Chalcedony Mine in the Imperial Household's hunting ground. There are quite a bit of differences between the two lives. There's no need to think too far. She also heard that Tianyazi was injured by a secret expert. This is not the previous life that she is familiar with anymore. Mu Luo Shui told UNG to gather all the clan members that she can. The Chalcedony Mine can substantially increase the cultivation talent. They must get it at all costs. Mu Luoxu said that, no matter who it is backing them, this Chalcedony Mine, she must get it. UNG said that, she has received the order. With commands from the Lord, they will surely get the mines. Muluoshue told her that, she won't be going this time, they should handle it. UNG asked her why she is not coming. Muluoshue was blushing. She said that, there's no reason, it's just she is going to get married. She won't be able to leave any time soon. UNG said, oh ho, so the Lord is going to get married, I thought. UNG shouted, because of the shocked. Muluoshue hears someone's footsteps, she told UNG to lower her voice. Someone is coming. It was Zhao Jinyu. She comes inside Mu Luoxue's room and said, This young master has arrived. He saw that. Mu Luoxue is seating on a chair. He goes to her and pick up her mirror. He said to her that he knows she is beautiful, but there's still no need to look in the mirror all day, right? Zhao Jinyu looks at that mirror and said that there's nothing special about this mirror. He'll give her a better one next time. Zhao Jinyu looks at her. She was mad at Zhao Jinyu. She said to Zhao Jinyu, that this is something her mother left. Zhao Jinyu gave back her that mirror and said sorry to her, saying he didn't know about that. When Mu Luoshui get that back, she thought as expected, he's only acting like a good for nothing. While blushing, Mu Luoshui said no worries, she forgive him. Mu Luoshui cuteness hit Zhao Jinyu in his heart. Zhao Jinyu looks around her room and said that, it seems like she didn't touch those refreshments at all, he asked her, did it not suit her taste? Mu Luoshui said that, she was waiting for Zhao Jinyu. Mu Luoshui asked her why was she waiting for him. While blushing, Mu Luoshui said, Aren't they husband and wife? That's why she wanted to eat together with him. Her cuteness hit Zhao Jinyu hard again. He thought that, how can he handle this cuteness? Zhao Jinyu told her that there's a lantern festival tonight. Zhao Jinyu gave her the rose and said to her that she have never left the palace before. How about she do him a favor? Mu Luoshui received that rose. A volcano blast in her heart. Her face turned red thinking that Zhao Jinyu is asking her out on a date. In her previous life, when Mu Luoshui was working in her office, she heard some noise. She asked her servant, is something happening outside for it to be so noisy? He told her that, the city is celebrating the Lantern Festival. He told her that, every year on the 15th of August for the Mid-Autumn Festival, the citizens hold a Grand Lantern Festival, as it symbolizes reunion and to celebrate the awaiting autumn harvest. She looks at the city. Everyone was celebrating the festival. She said to her servant that, It will be chaotic since there's so many people. The rebel army spy will be able to take the chance to kill him. Servant told her that, The lantern festival is very important. All the civilians are looking forward to today. If she were to stop it suddenly, he begged her to reconsider it. She looks at him angrily and said, Important, so what? The commoner's feelings are nothing compared to her safety. She told him to disperse them immediately. Mu Luoxue thought that time that, a festival to celebrate reunion, every single thing about it has nothing to do with her. But in this life she could enjoy this festival, this beautiful scenes with her husband. Mu Luoxue was walking on the street alone, looking at the lantern festival. When some thugs saw her, they said that, that white-haired girl seems to be from some foreign clan. One thug said to her that, he just got an amazing idea. Other thugs said what a coincidence, Maine too. Someone put his hand on those thugs' shoulder. It was Zhao Jinyu. He was too angry. He asked those thugs that, he've got a full course of punishments right here, care to take a look. After beating them, Zhao Jinyu goes to Mu Luoshui. He called her little idiot, and said to her that, he went away to buy something only for a moment. Why does she disappear the moment he take his eyes off of her? Mu Luoshui was playing with pinwheel. Zhao Jinyu, ask her do she like it. He told her to follow him, and don't wander off. There's still a lot of fun things to do. Zhao Jinyu goes to every shop and buy everything. He goes to Mu Luoshui, and said that, 
It's too bad he didn't bring the servants. It would have restricted this young master's performance. Mu Luo Shui said to Zhao Jinyu that wasting money is bad. Zhao Jinyu asked her, Do they need money to buy things? He thought. Tot, the last time he needed to spend money to buy things was during his previous life. Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luo Shui to don't worry. He told her that her husband is the capital's number one good for nothing. He give everything to her and told her to be careful while carrying them. Zhao Jinyu put his mask on Mu Luo Shui's head and told her that the princess who has been staying in the palace is no longer a bird trapped in the cage. He asked her to take a look at the mirror. Do she like it? Mu Luo Shui looked at herself in the mirror and thought, the feelings she have within her heart, just what are they? She have never felt like this in her past life. Mu Luo Shui's face turned red. She said she like it. Suddenly a carriage passed them, shouting, Step aside, make way, don't block the road. Everyone was clearing the road for them. A white-haired girl was riding that carriage. Zhao Jinyu grabbed Mu Luo Shui and pulled her back. Everything Mu Luo Shui was carrying fell down. Mu Luo Shui was very sad. Mu Luo Shui looks at the carriage. She was very angry, thinking, Did the carriage break? Oregon is someone dying. Oregon is their whole family getting executed. Zhao Jinyu looks at that carriage and said that. Looks quite nice. Mu Luoxue was looking at him. Zhao Jinyu left Mu Luoxue behind and goes after that carriage. He told her that. He'll be back in a moment. Mu Luoxue thought that. Did Zhao Jinyu just leave me to find another woman? Mu Luoxue was very sad. She started going back. She hears a voice that I only left for a moment. Why do you look so unbearable? Mu Luoxue looks back with hope. It was Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu put a white coat on Mu Luoxue and said, It looks good on her as he expected. Zhao Jinyu said that with this, she don't have to worry about others noticing her white hair. But he do like it though. Zhao Jinyu told her to let's go. They still have a lot of places to visit. Mu Luoxue was happy because Mu Luoxue didn't leave. Mu Luoxue looks at that coat and thought that this was from that person just now. It's not that he's abandoning her. She was too embarrassed. Mu Luoxue hugged Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu, ask her what happened. Is she so touched that she is unable to say anything? Mu Luoxue pinch him. She said that. It was worn by another woman. Zhao Jinyu said to her that he only did it for her. Mu Luoxue kissed Zhao Jinyu on his cheeks. Mu Luoxue was very happy. Zhao Jinyu was too embarrassed. Mu Luoxue was laughing. She is wishing that the time would pass slowly. Because all of these people no longer have anything to do with her. Zhao Jinyu goes in a in with Mu Luoxue. Both of them thought that shouldn't they find a chance to confess the truth to each other? Zhao Jinyu was hesitating thinking that what if Mu Luo Shui thinks that he really is a good for nothing? Mu Luo Shui was hesitating, thinking that, what if Zhao Jinyu believes that she really an idiot and decides to abandon him? Her, Zhao Jinyu said to Mu Luo Shui that there's something he want to tell her. Mu Luo Shui thought that what Zhao Jinyu want to tell her is that he is actually acting as a good for nothing, right? She've known about it since the beginning. She smiles, looking at him, hesitating. She thought that as Zhao Jinyu is willing to confess by himself. She'll forgive him. Mu Luo Shui thought about many things, but she was acting like she is curious to know what Zhao Jinyu want to tell her. Before Zhao Jinyu could say anything to Mu Luo Shui, his bell which he was hiding, started ringing. Zhao Jinyu thought, why is Blue Sparrow is looking for him at this moment? He don't want to go. He was hesitating to say anything to Mu Luo Shui. He could not think of anything. So he said to Mu Luo Shui that he need to go to the toilet. Mu Luo Shui looks at him and thought that, Zhao Jinyu is such a coward. She thought that, if he won't say it, then she'll say it instead. Mu Luo Shui told Zhao Jinyu to wait a minute. She also have something to tell him. Zhao Jinyu thought that, is Mu Luo Shui going to say that? Being an idiot is all an act, right? Zhao Jinyu smiles on his mind thinking that, he knew about it all along. Zhao Jinyu make a face like he is curious about what Mu Luo Shui want to tell him. Mu Luo Shui was about to tell him, but suddenly, Mu Luo Shui's hand mirror started vibrating. Mu Luo Shui stops. She thought, Why is Yuan Ji calling now of all times? Mu Luo Shui said to Zhao Jin Yu that she also need to go to the toilet. Both of them didn't tell the truth to each other. Both of them stand up. Zhao Jin Yu said to Mu Luo Shui, To let's meet up again later. Mu Luo Shui said, Okay. After some time, both of them saw each other leaving the inn. Zhao Jin Yu saw Mu Luo Shui. Mu Luo Shui saw Zhao Jin Yu. Mu Luo Shui said, Such a coincidence. Zhao Jinyu asked her, Weren't she going to the toilet? Mu Luo Shui didn't have any answer prepared. Say, 
Mulu Oshue said that, her mother told her before that they have a culture that, prior to marriage, girls must maintain distance from the groom. Mulu Oshue was embarrassed inside thinking what is she talking about. Zhao Jinyu must think that she a weird person. Zhao Jinyu was looking at her with curiosity thinking that, is there really a culture like this? But she's right. They should keep a distance before they get married. Mulu Oshue asked Zhao Jinyu, what is he doing here? Zhao Jinyu also didn't prepare any answer. Zhao Jinyu told her that, he have a not listening to music when going to the toilet will cause constipation disorder. So he need to change to a tea house that has a troop. Zhao Jinyu was dead inside thinking what the F asterisk CK is he saying, Mu Luo Shui thought. What kind of complicated disorder is this? There's no problem, right? She should find a chance to let the clan's doctor try it. Both of them smiles. Zhao Jinyu told her that, he'll come find her later. Mu Luo Shui said, okay. When Mu Luo Shui was going, Zhao Jinyu told her to don't wander around. Be careful not to get lost. Zhao Jinyu goes to a quiet place, he said. Damn, what an embarrassing situation. Blue Sparrow comes to him. Zhao Jinyu looks at her and said to her that she better have an emergency that makes her need to come and find him. If not, Zhao Jinyu looks at Blue Sparrow angrily and said to her that he will immerse her in that liquor underneath her feet. Blue Sparrow was very scared. She said that there really is a problem. There's a movement from the people Zhao Jinyu asked her to keep a watch on. Zhao Jinyu asked her, Is it about Huang clan? Blue Sparrow said, That's right. Huang Yurong left the palace in the afternoon. Right after she went back to the residence, she was conspiring with her dad, Minister Huang, in the study room. Zhao Jinyu smiles and said to Blue Sparrow, That it seems the Huang clan can't wait to frame Mu Luo Shui anymore. He told Blue Sparrow to prepare the unmanifested poisoned insect. Once the lantern festival ends, Zhao Jinyu will go to the Huang residence. On the other side, Mu Luo Shui goes to a quiet place. She looks around and said, There's no one here. It should do. Mu Luo Shui looks at her hand mirror and asks Yuan Ji, What's the matter? Yuan Ji called Mu Luo Shui spirit lord and asked her that. Did she encounter any danger? Why couldn't she contact her just now? Mu Luo Shui gets serious and asks her that. Does she have to report to her all the time? Yuan Ji said. I dare not. Lord, Yuan Ji told Mu Luo Shui that she've reached the capital. She asked Mu Luo Shui to give them the next instruction. Mu Luo Shui said, All right. In these two days, she will find someone to bring her into the Zhao residence. She asked Yuan Ji that, How many more days will the other reinforcement take to reach here? Yuan Ji said to her that, To make sure nothing goes wrong, the great general Yue Shan decided to come together, which is why it will take a few more days. Mu Luo Shui smiles and said, So Yue Shin is coming too. Yue Shi and Zhao Jin Yu is in the Dan realm, which is among the few experts within the clan. It's good that she can come this time. Mu Luo Shui said to Yuan Ji that, when the time comes, get the Chalcedony mine as fast as possible. Things might go wrong if it gets delayed. Yuan Ji said, yes, Lord. After that, both Mu Luo Shui and Zhao Jin Yu meet each other at the inn. They were walking toward the Zhao clan. Both of them were holding hand. Zhao Jin Yu said to her that, time flies so fast. Mu Luo Shui asked her, is it time to go back? Zhao Jin Yu said, Wien, furthermore the protocol officer from the palace will be coming tomorrow. Mu Luo Shui said, protocol officer, she hate it. They reach the Zhao clan. Zhao Jin Yu said to Mu Luo Shui that next time they will come again. Zhao Jin Yu said, sure. Mu Luo Shui asked Zhao Jin Yu that, Zhou citizens will not trick another Zhou citizen right. Zhao Jin Yu said to her, that Zhao Jin Yu will not lie to Mu Luo Shui. Both of them were very happy. After that, Zhao Jin Yu left Mu Luo Shui at home and goes to the rooftop of the house. He asked Blue Sparrow that she brought the unmanifested poisonous insect right. Blue Sparrow said, Of course, High Priest. In the Huang clan, Imperial Consort was taking a walk with her maid. She saw her father. She asked her father that, How come he is here? He smiles and greets her. Imperial Consort said, Father, what are you doing? We are a family. Her father said to her that, they cannot ignore etiquettes. That maid was looking at them. After meeting with her father, Imperial Consort left. Zhao Jinyu and Blue Sparrow was looking at them from that rooftop. Blue Sparrow. Ask Zhao Jinyu. That, why is that old geezer being overly respectful when greeting his own daughter? Zhao Jinyu said to Blue Sparrow that, she is so dumb. He told her that, this old yellow fish sure is being cautious. Zhao Jinyu, ask Blue Sparrow. That, did she see that maid? Blue Sparrow was confused. 
Zhao Jinyu told her that this maid is the emperor's spy, which is why he's being cautious even in the house. Not giving others chances to gossip. Truly, an excellent person. Zhao Jinyu thought that everyone knows that the military power is with the Zhao clan, which makes them think that the military of war has no authority. But looking at the previous life, Huang Yu is a talented person. Even after Mu Luo Shui became the empress, he still kept his usefulness. Zhao Jinyu asked a blue sparrow that he'll find a chance to deeply investigate. If he's loyal towards Ji Xinghe, then he have no choice but to eliminate him. But if he's not, then he's promising. Blue Sparrow asked him that. What plan does the high priest have? Zhao Jinyu said that he'll start from his children. He asked Blue Sparrow to give him the unmanifested poisonous insect. When Imperial Consort was leaving, Huang Yu felt someone presence. He looks at the rooftop, but there was no one, he thought. Is it a misperception? On the other hand, Imperial Consort was talking with her maid, and Blue Sparrow was looking at them. After the maid left, Imperial Consort goes to a quite dark place, she said. Why none of the lights in the hallway are lit up? What a bunch of lazy people. Suddenly she saw something. She asked, who is there? She was little scared. It was her father, Huang Yu. Imperial Consort asked him that. Didn't he just go back? Huang Hu smiled and asked her, why don't she have a better look at who he is? He was smiling like a devil. Imperial Consort was very scared. She said to him that, he is not her father. Who the hell is he? She told him to don't come near her. Suddenly a green light comes from her father's body, and his face changes into her face. She asks her to, who does she think she is? Imperial Consort recognized the unmanifested poisonous insect. Fake Imperial Consort said to her that, it seems she know her thing. Fake Imperial Consort show her emissary token, and ask her that, does she know what this is? Imperial Consort recognized the emissary token. Imperial Consort stepped back. She greets the fake Imperial Consort and said, The witch follower, Huang Yurong, awaits the emissary's command. Imperial Consort thought taught the fake Imperial Consort is the elder of witch clan. Imperial Consort thought that, Why is this happening? The witch clan has not reached out to her for more than a year. She thought she had broken away from them long ago. But they still came after her. Her natal poisonous insect is still in their hand. Both Muluok Shui and the Witch Clan, even though she is a noble consort, why is her life so hard? Imperial Consort said to Elder that, the Elder she previously met doesn't seem to be her. Elder said to her that, within the Zhou Dynasty, wherever she go, the Witch followers from that place shall listen to her command. From now on in the capital, she shall be the only Witch Clan's Elder Imperial Consort need to know. Imperial Consort thought that, the previous Elder's cultivation was very high. By listening to the tone of his speech, this person might be even more incredible. Just who is he? Imperial Consort asked Elder that. Why the Elder came to visit her? Is there any problem? Elder said to Imperial Consort that. She heard that Imperial Consort is practicing poisonous insects and that she've been exposed. Imperial Consort was scared, she said to Elder. That there is no need for the Elder to worry. She will deal with it. She've decided to frame the third princess, Mu Luok Shui, for this incident. Elder said to her that. She sure have lots of tricks. Elder shouted at her and asked her that, Did she know? Mu Luok Shui is important for their clan. Their clan's desire to unite with the North Ancient Clan. That can't be accomplished without Mu Luok Shui. An Imperial Consort dare to act by herself and ruin the big plan. Imperial Consort was very scared, she said. She don't dare. She will listen to the Elder. Elder give Imperial Consort a green pill and told her that, since the rumors are spread by her brother, Imperial Consort should make her brother eat this madness poisonous insect. Imperial Consort asked elders that, is he want her to this with her own hands to her brother? Imperial Consort was very shocked. Elder grabbed Imperial Consort and told her to don't forget that, her natal poisonous insect is with them. Of course she can choose to retaliate, or she can quietly work for her. If she do a good job, her brother's illness might not be impossible to cure. Elder give Imperial Consort a bell and told her that, she can use this insect bell to contact her. Elder told Imperial Consort to don't forget to use the madness poisonous insect. While leaving, Elder told her to remember that, by tonight if her brother doesn't go insane, she will be the one to go insane instead. Next day, Duke Zhao was looking at Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu was sleeping in his bed. Duke opens the window, and while removing the bedsheet, he shouted at Zhao Jinyu, Wake up! Zhao Jinyu wake up because of Thai sunlight. Duke said to Zhao Jinyu that he's still sleeping. What time is it right now? Duke told Zhao Jinyu that 
The protocol officer from the palace is almost here. Zhao Jinyu told Duke to just let them come. What's the big deal? Duke said to Zhao Jinyu, that they are all the emperor's spies. Zhao Jinyu said he will deal with it. Do he even have a plan? Will they get rid of them or not? Zhao Jinyu lay down again, and asked Duke, get rid of what? He said to Duke that a normal citizen shouldn't think of fighting and killing every day. He is a refined person. Duke Zhao pick up his soez, and looks at Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu said that, he got it, he will wake up. Zhao Jinyu said to Duke that, he just changed his mind and want to leave them be. If it's troublesome looking at them, wait until the princess residence is done being built, and he'll bring the protocol officers together to move out. There is no problem. Duke asked him, build what? Duke said to him, that there will no longer be a princess residence. Don't he know? Zhao Jinyu was surprised. He asked Duke that, which part of it is a princess getting married? Duke told Zhao Jinyu that, the palace says the imperial's field is not doing so well. They are unable to find even a suitable land. Zhao Jinyu said that, there isn't any right now, then can't he just wait until there is? Duke said to him that, Idaho he wait, then he better wait until the next life. Zhao Jinyu was too shocked. He said that, as a husband, he don't even have his own residence. What kind of number one good for nothing is he? Where's there must have the imperial's nobility, stupid emperor? Sure doesn't even care about his reputation. Duke asked Zhao Jinyu that, did he act until he forgot his real persona? Suddenly both of the hears that, Steward Hai is here. Eunuch Hai comes out of the carriage. Eunuch Li give him direction. Eunuch Li thank Duke Zhao, young Master Zhao, for the courtesy. Duke thank Eunuch Li for the hard work. Eunuch Hai congratulate Duke Zhao. Duke said, Why have the Eunuch Hai come today? He said he thought only Eunuch Li was coming. Duke Zhao thought that, This Hai Qingyan as the main highest eunuch is the emperor's most trusted confidant. People even call them half-relative. But he is of old age. He has rarely gone out of the palace these years. Why did he come here today? Eunuch Li to Duke Zhao, that, the eunuch Hai has been living peacefully and hoped to have a little change. Then he happened to hear about the marriage and came to have a look. Eunuch Hai said to Duke Zhao that he don't have much time. He asked Duke to arrange the servants first. They'll talk about the other things later. Duke said, Of course, please help yourself, eunuch Hai. Zhao Jinyu was standing beside the Duke when eunuch Hai passed by Zhao Jinyu. He looks at Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu felt it. Zhao Jinyu turned around, and while looking at eunuch Hai thought that, just now that old eunuch in the broad daylight, he dares to direct murderous intent towards Zhao Jinyu. After some time eunuch Hai goes to the place where Mu Luo Shui was, he greets Mu Luo Shui and said to her that, she certainly seemed to be doing well. Mu Luo Shui said to eunuch Hai that, she thought he wouldn't come. Mu Luo Shui's hands were shaking because of anger. She said to him that, that year, when her mother wanted to see eunuch Hai for the last time, he didn't appear. And now eunuch Hai even following around her mother's murderer, Ji Xinghe. Eunuch Hai said to Mu Luo Shu that, since ancient times, loyalty and righteousness have been difficult to obtain at the same time. If she decided to hold the grudge, then hold the grudge. He told Mu Luo Shu that the person she requested has already been brought in. Eunuch Hai told a girl to come in. That girl is Yuan Ji. She dyed black to avoid people's attention. She greets Mu Luo Shui. Mu Luo Shui told Yuan Ji that from today onwards, she is Mu Luo Shui's personal maid. Mu Luo Shui told Yuan Ji to make sure to not expose her Quan Xian clan's identity. Yuan Ji said, Yes, she stands up and said to Eunuch Hai that, she is very thankful to him that he brought her here. Mu Luo Shui asked her is she thankful to him. Mu Luo Shui asked Yuan Ji, Does Jie even know who he is? Yuan Ji was confused. Mu Luo Shui told her that, Eunuch Hai is no one else but Ji Xingyi's favorite servant. Eunuch Hai Ching Yan, Yuan Ji was surprised. She said, What? He is Hai Ching Yan. Yuan Ji asked him that. He still have the guts to appear here. Yuan Ji said to him that, back then, he obviously had a chance to save the former divine lord. She called Eunuch Hai traitor. Yuan Ji makes fire in her hand. Eunuch Hai looks at her and told her that, the things that happened back then, he have no excuses. Yuan Ji shouted at him. She told Yuan Hai to stop talking nonsense. She said that. Today she is going to use him to commemorate the former Divine Lord's soul. Yuan Ji attacked Eunuch Hai with her fist. Eunuch Hai didn't even blink his eyes. Yuan Ji attack stops right before Eunuch Hai's FC because of his shield. Yuan Ji was surprised. She thought that this old bastard has such a profound cultivation base. She even approached him and still she is no match. Eunuch Hai looks at her. Yuan Ji flew away and hit the wall. Mu Luo Shui stops Yuan Ji. She told Eunuch Hai that they're done here. 
Yunikai said to Muluo Shue that, it's getting late, it's time for him to return to the palace to resume his duties. But before that, he gets serious, and said to Muluo Shue that, he might be a little too nosy. He said to Muluo Shue that, Zhao Jinyu is a well-known good-for-nothing, so if Mu Luoxue isn't willing to marry him, he can, before he could complete his words. He felt Mu Luoxue angry. She said to Eunuch that, considering their past relationship, she won't look into his words. She have her own discretion, no need to say more. Eunuch Hai was surprised. He thought that, could it be that Mu Luoxue is serious about the marriage? Mu Luoxue said to him that, he don't need worry about it, he can now go. Eunuch Hai thought that, her highness has been living in the depths of the palace since she was little. She has never come in contact with any other man. It can't be that she was fooled by Zhao Jinyu, was she? Yuan Ji asked Mu Luo Shui that. Are they just going to let Eunuch Hai away like that? Mu Luo Shui told Yuan Ji that. Their foundation is not firm enough, so let it be. Yuan Ji said that it's strange having such profound cultivation. He should be able to maintain his youthful appearance. So why do we look old? Mu Luo Shui said, as if she know. Mu Luo Shui saw that there was a letter on the table. It was written to Mu Luo Shui from Eunuch Hai. Letter was that, I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm glad to receive a confidential letter from you. I'm too ashamed to face your highness. But since your highness has entrusted me, I will do everything I can to help. The longer I live, the more the guilt grows. Since that incident happened, it has been hard for me to endure the guilt, which makes me no longer maintain my youthful appearance, letting this cowardly heart match this awful face. I'm not writing this just an act, but I only hope that when I meet your highness, I hope your highness give me a chance. If there is anything you need in the future, I will do my best to fulfill your demands. Hai Qingyan. Mu Luoshui told Yuan Ji that she can sleep in the side room. From now on she'll have to accompany and serve her. And if there's no one around, she don't have to be so courteous. Yuan Ji was happy. She said Tat. It's so close that she even thought it somehow together with the master's bedroom. Yuan Ji told Mu Luo Shui that there has been progress in the matters. Mu Luo Shui asked Yuan Ji to investigate before. According to the informant's report, the Huang family's second son had gone crazy yesterday at night for some reason. Mu Luo Shui was asked her, Is he crazy now? Yuan Ji said, Yes, and it's most likely someone poisoned him. Mu Luo Shui thought that before she didn't have the chance to poison him, and she have always been on guard. Anyhow. This matter should now be settled. Yuan Ji looks at Muluo Shui with glowing eyes and told her that a while ago she took a look at the master's fiancé from afar, and he looked truly handsome. Master is so lucky. Muluo Shui was blushing. She said that he's not bad. She told Yuan Ji that there is no need to mention it. Besides, getting married is quite troublesome. Yuan Ji said to Muluo Shui that there is something she don't quite understand. She said that Master's fiancé is obviously really good-looking, so why would she let him with other women right before marriage? Mu Luo Shui was surprised. She asked Yuan Ji, what did she said? Yuan Ji told Mu Luo Shui that, the other women that entered with her, she was sent to be her personal maid, and they were assigned to take part in a trial marriage. Yuan Ji said to Mu Luo Shui that, the trial marriage isn't it the same as Mu Luo Shui know what it was, talking for Mu Luo Shui, she almost turned into stone. Zhao Jin Yu was thinking that, What's that old eunuch's problem? Why does he have so much killing intent towards him? Even though they've only just met, he even brought someone over to Luoxue's residence. She shouldn't be in any danger, right? Zhao Jinyu was thinking about, what should he do, since the inspector is already there, going by the general etiquette? Zhao Jinyu will definitely be stopped from entering. But suddenly he realized that, currently he is playing the role of a useless debauchee. Why would he care about their dumb etiquette and rules? Zhao Jinyu run towards Mu Luo Shui's resident, saying that he'll walk on in. When Zhao Jinyu goes there, there were some soldiers who were standing in front of Mu Luo Shui's resident. They ask him that, what business young master Zhao has over here? When Zhao Jinyu saw them, he realized that they were already waiting for him, but this is his house. Zhao Jinyu make an excuse saying that the weather was nice, so he wanted to come and take a stroll and appreciate the flowers. Those soldiers told Zhao Jinyu that this area is currently restricted. A soldier asked Zhao Jinyu that, before their marriage, Zhao Jinyu is not allowed to meet the third princess. Does young master Zhao not know this? He said that, if young master Zhao is really here to appreciate flowers, why not go to some other place having plenty of flowers? Those soldiers were looking like some thugs. Zhao Jinyu thought that, what should he do now? 
Do we just force his way in? But if he use his spiritual power, he'll expose his ability to cultivate. Zhao Jinyu was very angry. He told them that, it's them who forced Zhao Jinyu to do this. Zhao Jinyu asked them that, have they ever heard of the body refining art of entering through the back? Those soldiers were scared after hearing that. Zhao Jinyu crossed his fingers and shouted the name of the technique, ass splitting. Zhao Jinyu poked his two finger into the private part of those soldiers. After doing so, he proudly say the name of his attack as, special technique, thousand years of death. Other soldiers comes there, shouting at Zhao Jinyu. They shouted that, they will protect the purity of the third princess. Zhao Jinyu goes after them, asking them, why the hell are they protecting the purity of someone else's wife? Meanwhile in the resting room, Eunuch Hai said to Duke Zhao that, he will be residing within the Zhao residence for a while. He asked Lord Zhao's for hospitality. Duke asked him that, where's that coming from? He told Eunuch Hai that, they are all family here. Eunuch Hai told Duke that, the second day of the second month will be auspicious. Why don't they hold the wedding on that day? He asked Duke. What does he think? Duke Zhao politely said. There will be another month till the wedding. He have no objections, and will leave it up to his majesty to decide. Duke was thinking that, as if he could object to something decided by Ji Xingyi, that little bastard. Eunuch Hai said, Then it is settled. He told Duke that, There's one more matter. He called Lian or Bayer, come over here. Two beautiful girl comes there. Eunuch Hai told Duke that, These two are here to assist the young master in his trial marriage. After they've spent a night with young master Zhao, they will report the situation of the physical capabilities of the young master to the court. Duke almost forgot about this thing. Duke thought that, it's a good thing Yishingi still cares about his reputation enough to send two beautiful young ladies to come test his son. If he had sent two old maids instead, Zhao Jinyu might have had to reveal his cards earlier than expected. Duke hears someone shouting that, something terrible has happened. It was housekeeper. He told Duke that, the young master Zhao Jinyu attacked the inspection officers. Duke was surprised. He asked Housekeeper, what happened? Housekeeper told him that, he really don't know either. Everyone runs towards there. Duke called Zhao Jinyu, stinky kid, saying that he always causing trouble for Duke. When Duke goes there, he saw that all the inspection officers are lying on the ground. Only one officer is standing, telling Zhao Jinyu to don't come closer. He said to Zhao Jinyu, that if he come any close he will scream. Zhao Jinyu told him that, even if screaming makes his throat sore, no one will come to save him. Duke was to shock to she that, he shouted at Zhao Jinyu. He told Zhao Jinyu to stop that right now. Zhao Jinyu stops and make a face like nothing happened. An inspection officer said to other that, Zhao Jinyu is the scourge of the heavens. He've never seen anyone bully others like this. Other officer said to him that, he have already been alive for nearly half a century. He have never been humiliated like this before. That officer turned around and told Zhao Jinyu to just wait. He said that, He'll definitely report this matter and punish Zhao Jinyu. Duke Zhao punches Zhao Jinyu on the face and told those officials that they don't need to punish Zhao Jinyu. Duke will punish him right now. After punching Zhao Jinyu, Duke dragged Zhao Jinyu by the feet. There was a blood stain. Those officers were little scared to see that. Duke throw Zhao Jinyu like garbage. Zhao Jinyu hit hard the ground. Zhao Jinyu was acting like he is dead. Duke told him to stop playing dead. He told Zhao Jinyu to get up. They need to have a serious talk. Duke asked Zhao Jinyu that, do he already know about the girls that the court has arranged for him as trial marriage partners? They will definitely ask Zhao Jinyu to complete the trial marriage within these few days. Can he do it? Zhao Jinyu stand up and ask Duke Zhao that, can he help Zhao Jinyu reject them? Zhao Jinyu was very serious about this. Duke was happy to see that. Duke thought that, everyone thinks his son is a debashi, but this brat is loyal to his wife. Duke said, all right. He said that. He never intended to let them do it anyway. What if he accidentally got those two pregnant Zhao Jinyu said that he know. According to the rules, he'll have to marry them if that happens. By then, the emperor will know even what color of underwear Duke is wearing. Zhao Jinyu make a joke saying, Why is that perverted old man so interested in their underwear anyway? Duke told Zhao Jinyu to stop messing around. He asked Zhao Jinyu that, This trial marriage was arranged by the emperor. It's not that easy to reject them. Do we have a plan? Zhao Jinyu think about it for a bit. Then he said that he do have a plan. He told Duke to just help him stall them for ten days, and he'll be able to settle it. Duke told him that ten days is possible, but how confident is he? Duke said that he also can't guarantee they'll not secretly crawl into Zhao Jinyu's room either. Zhao Jinyu smiles like he have a big plan. Duke gets angry and shouted at Zhao Jinyu that 
How many times have Zhao Jinyu told Duke to leave things to him? Can he do it this time or not? That night, Mu Luoxue was thinking about her past life. That was her last memory, before she died. At that time, she was badly hurt. She said that this day has come, after wandering for a lifetime, is this how she finally end up? He was thinking that, just where did she go wrong? She thought that, if at that time, she went with Zhao Jinyu, regardless of everything, would the ending be any different? Blood was coming out of her mouth. She smiles and said that, on top of the imperial throne, everything shall be fate. She said they. In the end, she is still an empress. Suddenly someone knocked Mu Luoxue's room door. Mu Luoxue thought that, it's late night, who could it be? Mu Luoxue looks at Yuan Ji and told her to be ready. She slowly opens the door. She was that. It is Zhao Jinyu. He gets closer. Mu Luoxue and told her good evening. Mu Luoxue hide behind her door and ask Zhao Jinyu. What did he come here for? She said that, her mother once said. The men that come to meet at this time are all big bad wolves. Zhao Jinyu told her that he didn't have any other choice. He said to her that if Mu Luoxue feel uncomfortable, then he have to go back and sleep in the brothel. Yuan Ji laughs at Zhao Jinyu thinking that he is using these kinds of cheap tricks. Zhao Jinyu is just courting death. Mu Luoxue's ancestral spring clan respect the girls. Zhao Jinyu dares to talk about going to a brothel so the spirit lord will deal with him. Mu Luoxue grabbed him and shouted, No, don't go. She asked Zhao Jinyu that, are the girls from brothels better than her? Yuan Ji was too shocked to hear that. She was looking at Mu Luoxue. Mu Luoxue asked Zhao Jinyu that, is she not his bride? Zhao Jinyu told her that, it's not this. He just remembered, Mu Luoxue's spare room is going to be used by her personal maid. He told Mu Luoxue to just forget about it. Mu Luoxue looks at Yuan Ji and said that, it's not a problem. She told Zhao Jinyu that her maid is going to find her relatives in the city tonight. Yuan Ji was confused. Mu Luoxue stared at her angrily. Yuan Ji didn't have an option. She said yes to, was Mu Luoxue said. Yuan Ji gets out of the room. Mu Luoxue told her to come back early tomorrow. Mu Luoxue closed the door and asked Zhao Jinyu, why did he come here? Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luoxue to don't even mention it. He told Mu Luoxue that, the palace brought two maids over to have a trial marriage. By this time, the two of them are in Zhao Jinyu's room now. He asked her, what does she think they would do? Mu Luoxue said that, she have heard from them, this is the rule of the palace. But Mu Luoxue was embarrassed saying it. She told Zhao Jinyu that, she don't want to share him with others. Zhao Jinyu smiles when he hears that. Zhao Jinyu said, that's why he is right here, is he not? He said that those protocol officers keep babbling about the sense of propriety and ethics. Zhao Jinyu said that, as long as he stay here for a few nights, and let those protocol officers think that everything is falling in place, then naturally they won't be needing those maids for trial marriage anymore. Zhao Jinyu said that, he is excited to see the look on their faces tomorrow the moment he step out of her room. Suddenly, Zhao Jinyu, remember when Mu Luoxue hit him? He got scared and told Mu Luoxue that, he'll sleep in the side room tonight. When Zhao Jinyu was going to another room, Mu Luoxue thought that, did he really just come here to sleep? Mu Luoxue was worried thinking that, a man and woman sharing a room alone, yet he's still so genteel. She thought that, is she not attractive enough? Mu Luoxue was about to cry. She thought that, there's only one month left before the wedding. She need to maintain a girl's decency. She not that kind of an easy person. But her life is never confirmed to have a tomorrow. Death might come first. Even after becoming a person with authority, she still can't be at peace. Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luoxue that it's getting late now. She should also rest early. Mu Luoxue grabbed Zhao Jinyu clothes and while blushing asked him that, sleep together, can't they? Mu Luoxue thought that just this once she won't care about anything else. Mu Luoxue pushed Zhao Jinyu on the table. Zhao Jinyu was embarrassed to see what Mu Luoxue is doing. Before he could say anything, Mu Luoxue put her finger on his lips. Both of them fall in that deep night for each other like soft wind, blue water, willow spry and the lively fragrance of green leaves and bingy lotus. On the other hand, Yuan Ji was seating on the side of a road. She said that, a little suffering is good for the soul. Only by suffering will one gain resolution. Working hard will help achieve courage, and her stomach is grumbling. Passing by people were giving her some money thinking she is a bagger the next day. Zhao Jinyu comes out of Mu Luoxue's room. He said good morning to world. The other officials were talking to Duke Zhao about the work they were doing. 
Those officials saw that Zhao Jinyu is coming out of Mu Luoshui's room. Zhao Jinyu said that there are so many people this early. Duke Zhao looks at Zhao Jinyu and thought that. Did he come to the wrong courtyard? Suddenly, Mu Luoshui comes from that room, rubbing her eyes, saying, Why is it so noisy? When Duke Zhao saw Mu Luoshui, he was too shocked. Those officials shouted at Zhao Jinyu and Mu Luoshui that the moral degeneration of society is getting worse. To do such an act before getting married, simply outrageous. Duke Zhao thought that his son is too bold to do it with her highness. He dared to the protocol officers will not leave him alone now. Zhao Jinyu said to those officials that how can they call two people loving each other such an act? He said that it seems the matter regarding youngsters is too stimulating for everyone here. Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luoshui that she can go back and sleep more. He told her to don't worry and leave this to him. Those officials shouted at Zhao Jinyu. They said that they still won't repent. They asked Zhao Jinyu that, do they think a debauchee like him is worth becoming a relative of the emperor? They said that, they have already informed the emperor of all those evil deeds Zhao Jinyu did in the past few days. They will also report on this matter. He just wait to be punished. Zhao Jinyu smiles and told housekeeper to all right, prepare a carriage for the protocol officers. He told housekeeper to prepare some snacks and fruits. Please don't let the protocol officers starve. Official leader called Zhao Jinyu. Stubborn fool, he told other officers. What are they doing still staying here? Duke Zhao said to Zhao Jinyu that, Previously, Zhao Jinyu said he need ten days. Only three days have passed, and you managed to drive them away. Was this his plan? Zhao Jinyu told. Don't rush, old man. Zhao Jinyu smiles and said that. The best is yet to come. On the other hand, Eunuch Hai goes to Emperor Ji Xinghe. Emperor asked him what's the matter. Eunuch Hai told Emperor that. The Taiyi sect has received His Majesty's letter and denied the possibility of it being a person from Taiyi sect. Eunuch Hai told Emperor that. There's an immortal desiring to meet his majesty to explain, and seems to have an intention to descend the mountain to assist. Emperor said that, to descend the mountain at this moment, they just wanted to get a piece of pie at the hidden immortal summit. Such a reasonable calculation. Emperor said that, the chaplain is injured. He also don't have enough pawns on his hand to use. In the end, they are still not sure who will be the one taking advantage. He told Eunuch Hai to ask them about the price and make arrangements. Suddenly that official summed to the emperor and told him that a big problem has occurred. He said that Zhao Jinyu from the Zhao clan has caused trouble again. Emperor looks at that official angrily and asks someone to throw this official trash out. That official was very shocked, Eunuch Hai said. Understood. He grabbed that official's clothes and dragged that official out of that place. That official was called to the emperor to listen to him, but he did not. Eunuch Hai took that official out of the palace and throw him out. Eunuch Hai told that official that his majesty is benevolent. They'll spare him this time. He told that official to get lost. That official was too shocked he said to Eunuch Hai that this time he really have an important matter to report. Eunuch Hai asked that official that in these three days, how many times have they all reported? They said the same thing every time. First time, those officials come and said that Zhao Jinyu is so arrogant. He beat all of us protocol officers. Emperor told them to deal with it their selves self. Second time they come to Emperor and said that Zhao Jinyu belittled the law. He never paid money when he bought things. Emperor told them to ask his father to pay for it. Eighth time, those officials said that Zhao Jinyu has gone too far. He keeps insisting the protocol officers sing for him when he's in the toilet and keep making excuses saying it's a disease. Emperor shouted at them, telling him to get lost. That official said to Eunuch Hai that it's not the same this time. This time Zhao Jinyu spent the night in the third princess's room. Eunuch Hai asked him what did he say. Eunuch Hai was very angry. He said to that official that they got a bunch of people at Zhao residence. Yet they can't even take care of the princess and let Zhao Jinyu, who doesn't even know martial arts, sneak in. He asked that official that what's the point for his majesty to keep them alive? That official was very scared. He thought about something and shouted that they already long known about Zhao Jinyu's ill intentions. So it's him cross-dressing in the third princess's room yesterday night. Zhao Jinyu didn't get his way. When Eunuch Hai hears that, his soul almost left his body. Those officials come back to Zhao resident with a gloomy face. Zhao Jinyu make fun of them by asking them that, Why did they come back so early? Duke Zhao asked Zhao Jinyu that, How did he do it? Duke heard his majesty ordered these protocol officers to be prohibited from going into the palace for four months. Zhao Jinyu laughs and told Duke that, no one will like alarms that keep going off. 
This is called the second time will be weakened, the third time will be exhausted. Duke asked him that. How can he be so confident, even though Duke only know about it just now? Zhao Jinyu said that, it's because he got a special information channel. He was talking about Imperial Consort. While going Zhao Jinyu told Duke that, those protocol officers are not going to come and bother him, unless they want to make the Emperor angry again and have their heads chopped off. He said that, he have done everything, he can go back to sleep now. Zhao Jinyu while walking in the hallway was thinking that, they have already shared the same bed. Why is his dummy wife still acting dumb? They can't keep it like that even in the future. Do we need to raise her like a daughter? On the other hand, Duke Zhao was thinking that Zhao Jinyu has dealt with the protocol officers and the trial marriage maids and didn't even ask Duke to step in. Now that Duke think about it, he didn't look after Zhao Jinyu much. He became so capable before Duke knew it. Zhao Jinyu thought that people often say after getting drunk one will tell the truth. If Mu Luo Shui gets drunk, maybe she will expose her true nature. Duke thought that, today he will bring two bottles of good liquor and drink with his son. But before Duke can get to kitchen, Zhao Jinyu left the kitchen with two liquor bottles. When Duke didn't find the liquor, he shouted that, Where the heck is the liquor he've kept for years? On the other hand, UNG wakes up for the bed. She got sick after coming back that night and didn't get a good rest until yesterday. She only managed to get some good sleep. She said that, All of it is for the Spirit Lord. She goes to Mu Luoshui and said to her that, She'll take a walk outside for a while. Mu Luoshui said okay. And suddenly Zhao Jinyu appeared behind Yuan Ji while carrying two liquor bottle. There was silent screaming in Yuan Ji's heart. Mu Luoshui was happy to see Zhao Jinyu. She said to Zhao Jinyu that, He just come and it's such coincidence that Yuan Ji just said she's going to visit her relatives tonight again. Mu Luoshui while smiling. Ask Yuan Ji that, Isn't what she said is right? Disappointed Yuan Ji said, Yes, that's right. Zhao Jinyu put the liquor on the table and asked Mu Luo Shui to drink with him. Mu Luo Shui said that, she can't drink. Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luo Shui to don't worry. He told her that, this liquor is Duke's treasured. Duke usually treats it as treasure, and is not willing to bring it out. Zhao Jinyu said to Mu Luo Shui that, they will only drink liquor today. And told her to just treat it as celebrating their wedding in advance. When Mu Luo Shui hear that it's for celebrating wedding, she grabbed a glass and drank that in one go. And in just few seconds, Mu Luo Shui gets full drunk. Half an hour later, Mu Luo Shui was seating after emptying both of those liquor bottles. Suddenly, she shouted at Zhao Jinyu, calling him big idiot. She said that she still want to drink. Zhao Jinyu was shocked that the two bottles of liquor were emptied this fast. He thought that Mu Luo Shui got drunk the moment she drank and still snatched the liquor. Zhao Jinyu said Mu Luo Shui to drink the tea to sober up first. He will leave it here today. He said that. He shouldn't have had bad intentions and asked her to drink. He told Mu Luo Shui to rest early, and told her that he'll come to see her again tomorrow. But Mu Luo Shui was too drunken to understand what Zhao Jinyu is saying. She grabbed Zhao Jinyu and told him that he have to stay. While blushing, Mu Luo Shui told Zhao Jinyu to accompany her. Mu Luo Shui was too embarrassed. While laughing, she told Zhao Jinyu that he will stay overnight. Here, Zhao Jinyu pulled back her and said to Mu Luo Shui, that he is a man of values, an upright gentleman. How can he take advantage of people? And the next moment, he shared the bed with Mu Luo Shui to justify his character. Zhao Jinyu thought that appetite and lust are a part of human nature. Suddenly, his bell started ringing. Zhao Jinyu thought that, why is Blue Sparrow looking for him at this hour? Zhao Jinyu comes out of the room all exhausted. Blue Sparrow comes flying and told Zhao Jinyu that, there's an emergency. She said that, there's a group of people approaching there. Clansmen stationed at the Chalcedony mine, their numbers are pretty big. She think they are from the northern wilderness. Zhao Jinyu told her that. They'll go and take a look. Blue Sparrow was happy to hear that. The high priest will personally deal with it. Zhao Jinyu pull out his fighting mask and sword. He said that. Northern barbarians must be tired of living. On the other hand, a huge army was headed towards the witchcraft clan's spirit mine. This army is for ancestral spring clan. There was carriage inside that carriage a white hair girl asked her master that. She don't understand. Why are they taking orders from a young lass? She is referring to Mu Luokshu. That girl shouted. Is it just because of her status? Her master, Yue Sen, who is a great general. Ask her that. Does she think Mu Luokshu is not worthy? That white hair girl said that. The seat of the spirit lord is for those who are capable. She asked her master that. With what right does Mu Luokshu qualify for it? Yue Shen said to that girl that. 
It seems she have a quite prominent impression of their new spirit lord. That white-haired girl said, Of course she do, although Mu Luokshui is the previous spirit lord's daughter. But Mu Luokshui's bloodline is not pure. The purity of the bloodline directly dictates the talent of their clansmen towards cultivation. Mu Luokshui's bloodline is impure, and she is untalented. Why should they listen to her? Yue Shen said, So bloodline can decide everything? Yue Shen said that, She've lived for 300 years, and it's her first time hearing it. Yue Shen said to that girl that, It seems she know much more than Yue Shen, so the great general's position should be her. When that girl hears that, she got scared. She apologized to Yue Shen saying, It was a slip of the tongue. Yue Shen, while looking outside the window, said to that girl that, She only know that the current spirit lord is not of pure bloodline. But do she know about spirit lord's atavistic bloodline? Yue Shen told that girl that, Mu Luo Shui has managed to perform the first ancestor's true body at such a young age. Therefore, Mu Luo Shui's cultivation is much higher than others. She's already in the Dan realm, same as Yue Shen, how old Yue Shen is, and how old is Mu Luo Shui. Yue Shi told that white-haired girl that there were also clansmen who didn't accept it back then, and choose to challenge Mu Luo Shu. As for the outcome all of them lost their life, she smiles calling them a bunch of idiots. She said that, the current spirit lord not only has cultivation, but she also has a dragon gate. In front of ancestral spring clan army Zhao Jin Yu was standing alone. Yue Xin said to that girl that, they'll talk about it later. She said, apparently a cute little mouse is blocking the road. That white-haired girl comes out of that carriage shouted, who is it? Zhao Jin Yu grabbed his sword handle and said to her that, this route is inaccessible, please go back. Zhao Jin Yu pulled out his sword a little bit and said, Oregon else there will be blood all over the place. When Zhao Jin Yu saw that, that girl has white hair and red eyes, he thought. Are they ancestral spring clan? That white-haired girl shouted, Ask Zhao Jin Yu that. He alone dare to block off their road. Is he seeking death? Zhao Jin Yu looks at her and thought that, in his previous life, after Mu Luo Shui became a prisoner, she was rescued by the ancestral spring clan. Although Mu Luo Shui didn't have any relationship with them in this life, they are still from the same clan. He pulled back his sword and said to that girl that, The witchcraft clan's mine. Don't even think of wanting it. They are covered by him. That white-haired girl said, So it's an idiot from the witchcraft clan. That girl fly in the sky and told Zhao Jin Yu to go die. She attacked Zhao Jin Yu with some spiritual knives. But before those spiritual knives could touch Zhao Jin Yu, Zhao Jin Yu grabbed one of those knife and destroyed other knife with it. Zhao Jin Yu told her to don't be impatient. He said that, he rarely feel like sparing them all. That white-haired girl was surprised. How can it be? She disappeared in front of Zhao Jin Yu and a pair behind him. She asked Zhao Jin Yu, Is he looking down on her? She again attacked Zhao Jin Yu with a kick. From her attack ground got destroyed. But when she looks down, Zhao Jin Yu was not there. She was looking around for Zhao Jin Yu. Zhao Jin Yu was seating behind her. She said he is right here. Zhao Jin Yu grabbed that white-haired girl's leg and throw back her towards her people. She hit the carriage. Yue Shen grabbed her from falling and said to her that she is too rash. Yue Shen said to Zhao Jin Yu that the young one is immature. Please forgive her, Zhao Jin Yu said. No worries. Zhao Jin Yu grabbed his sword handle and said that the joke ends there. Zhao Jin Yu thought that if it takes a long time, those people from the capital will be attracted to him. Zhao Jin Yu pulled out his sword. His sword was burning with spiritual energy. He said that from now on, those who cross this line shall die. He makes a line in the ground with just a simple attack with his sword. There was a huge line between Zhao Jin Yu and those people. Those soldiers realized that Zhao Jin Yu is a mainland immortal. Yue Shi shouted at them, asking them, What are they panicking about? Yue Shi started calling Zhao Jin Yu sir. She said to Zhao Jin Yu, That Zhao Jin Yu indeed have extraordinary power. Why bother with small people like them? Can't he do them a favor? Yue Shin was angry inside thinking that, how come a small Chalcedony mine has a mainland immortal? Zhao Jin Yu didn't say anything to her. Yue Xin thought that, there's no way. This place is quite close to the capital. If Zhao Jin Yu really a mainland immortal and intervenes in this issue, it will surely attract those Zhuguo staying dormant in the capital. Even if he's a mainland immortal, he won't be able to hold off the encirclement of multiple Zhuguo. Yue Xin thought that, maybe she can try to sound him out. Yue Xin said to Zhao Jin Yu that, Sometimes it's better to forgive someone than to persist in looking further into the mistake. She said she believe he also don't wish to while talking Yue Xin take a step, and she immediately retreat. She looks at that line which Zhao Jin Yu made. With scared face, Yue Xi looks at Zhao Jin Yu.
and thought that, what's this lingering sword intent, just close to it makes her shudder. Zhao Jinyu is really a mainland immortal. Yue Shi was trembling. She realized that, Zhao Jinyu is too dangerous, he is like king of hell. Yue Xin stepped back and was breathing heavenly. Zhao Jinyu asked her, is she going to fight or not? Yue Xin was too scared, everyone was too shocked to see her like that. Yue Shi bowed down in front of Zhao Jinyu and thanked him for not killing them. Zhao Jinyu let them go back. He realized that his emotions are affecting him. He thought that it wasn't without any benefits. If it comes to matters within the capital, the messier they are, the better. The next day, Yuan Ji comes back. Mu Luoshui was cursing someone. Yuan Ji asked her that. Did the young master go back? When Wen Ji saw Mu Luoshui cursing someone, she asked her what happened. Mu Luoshui told her that yesterday's operation failed. Yuan Ji was shocked. She said there is no way, she asked Mu Luoshui that, wasn't the great general there. Mu Luoshui told her that based on what Yue Shen described, yesterday night, the southern barbarian had only a person with a sword, and he managed to defeat their clansmen and force them to retreat. Mu Luoshui said that, there's no doubt he's a mainland immortal. When Yuan Ji hears about mainland immortal, she was too scared. She said that, is there was a mainland immortal. Then does it mean their clansmen suffered heavy casualties? Mu Luoshui said no. Yuan Ji was confused. Mu Luoshui told Yuan Ji that the other side didn't seem to have any intention of killing. Fortunately, the clansmen are all safe. Never did Mu Luoshui think in this life that the witch clan would actually have a mainland immortal. Mu Luoshui said that it will be impossible for them to fight for this Chalcedony mine now. The manufacture of Dragon Gate will have to be delayed. Yuan Ji asked Mu Luoshui that what should they do now? Mu Luoshui told Yuan Ji to report to the court. Mu Luoshui was very angry, she said that, since they can't have it, no one else can. Yuan Ji asked her that, reporting to the court, will it work? Mu Luoshui said to her that, it might not work out for others, but it's different for them. Yuan Ji left Zhou resident at night. That night, the Imperial Guards receive a secret report. Eunuch Hai's give a secret order that, there's another clan stealing ores in the Imperial family's hunting ground, if find anyone, kill them on the spot. However, that night, they couldn't find the presence of any foreign clan. Next day, Zhao Jinyu was lying on a chair beside a pill-making flance. Blue Sparrow comes flying. She told Zhao Jinyu that it's not good. Zhao Jinyu told her to calm down. He said to her that, as an accomplished person, she must be as cool as a cucumber. Her cultivation is far from enough. Blue Sparrow sat down on that chair and asked Zhao Jinyu what is he doing. Zhao Jinyu asked her that, can't she see? He told her that, he is refining pills. Blue Sparrow was confused. She asked him why is he refining in this way. Zhao Jinyu told her that deliberately doing something that will put you in danger is not good. Zhao Jinyu gets serious and said that the pill is done, but said that he think it failed. Blue Sparrow shouted at him. She asked him that. Isn't that the thousand-year-old mushroom that her father gave him? She told him that wasting natural resources recklessly will lead him to be punished. Blue Sparrow was crying saying that it would have been so good if Zhao Jinyu gave her that thousand-year-old mushroom to cultivate. To change the subject, Zhao Jinyu asked her that, Why did she come? What's the problem? Blue Sparrow told him everything. Zhao Jinyu was too shocked after hearing that. His mind was raided by the Imperial Guards. Zhao Jinyu said to Blue Sparrow that, A mind that big vanished. Blue Sparrow was thinking taut. Zhao Jinyu just said one has to be as cool as a cucumber. He didn't seem all that sad when he burned that thousand-year-old mushroom, though. Zhao Jinyu thought that it must be those northern barbarians. He released them, and they reported it. Zhao Jinyu asked Blue Sparrow that how much were their losses yesterday? Blue Sparrow told him that their losses were zero. Zhao Jinyu said that there is no way it would be zero. He said that the Imperial Guards are directly under Ji Xingyi's elite division. Blue Sparrow told him that before the raid last night, there was a northern barbarian who came as an informant and told them that the Imperial Guards are coming. They all better run if they don't want to die. Zhao Jinyu understand that. Since he let them go, they also didn't let him have any loss. Blue Sparrow tried to say something, but Zhao Jinyu told her to just leave it like that. Zhao Jinyu said that. It wasn't long since he gave Tian Yazi a stab. Now even the Chalcedony mine has been found out. They should stay low for the time being. Zhao Jinyu thought that. This matter was ruined due to his sudden kindness. Next time he won't be so kind. But he was happy thinking that. The leader of the Northern Wasteland is a wonderful person. It would be good if they got a chance to talk. Blue Sparrow noticed that 
Mu Luoxui is coming towards Zhao Jinyu from behind. Zhao Jinyu didn't notice her. He was thinking that, he don't even know what the other person looks like. How can they meet so easily? Mu Luo Shui blow in Zhao Jinyu ears and ask him, what is he thinking about? Zhao Jinyu ask her that, how come she is suddenly here? Mu Luo Shui smiles and told Zhao Jinyu that she've something to tell him. Blue Sparrow was embarrassed seeing them getting all mushy gushy this early in the morning. Blue Sparrow seat on Zhao Jinyu's shoulder. When Mu Luo Shui saw her, she said that, this little bird is so cute. She asked Zhao Jinyu that, can she touch it? Blue Sparrow was thinking that, this stupid woman, was it not enough for her to disturb the discussion of an important matter between the high priest and her? She even dared to think about touching Blue Sparrow's precious body. But Blue Sparrow was too shocked to hear Zhao Jinyu giving permission to Mu Luo Shui. He even said to her that, this bird loves to be pampered by people. Mu Luo Shui grabbed Blue Sparrow from Mu Luo Shui and in instead, Zhao Jinyu was amazed to see such speed. He thought that, is this the explosive power of when a girl encounters a cute animal? Mu Luoxue was rubbing Blue Sparrow's chicks with her chicks, calling her cute. Blue Sparrow was annoyed. In her thoughts, she was telling Mu Luoxue to get away from her. Mu Luoxue said to Blue Sparrow that she know a spirit animal like her has intelligence, and she also dislike Mu Luoxue. But since she is a pet owned by her husband, Mu Luoxue is her mistress. Mu Luoxue told Blue Sparrow to better be tactful. Blue Sparrow was too shocked to hear her. Blue Sparrow thought that, are these really words that a person with a childlike intelligence can say? Blue Sparrow was trying to told Zhao Jinyu that, he have been deceived. Mu Luoxue grabbed Blue Sparrow with both of her hand and tilled her that if she keep moving around, Mu Luoxue will put her as an appetizer for dinner. Now Blue Sparrow gets more scared. Mu Luoxue asked Zhao Jinyu that, this little bird is so pretty, can Jay take care of it for a few days? Blue Sparrow was making a single of soas, trying to tell Zhao Jinyu to save her. Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luo Shui to feel free to take it if she want. Zhao Jinyu asked Mu Luo Shui that what problem was she talking about. He told her that those protocol officers might not dare to annoy her anymore. Still, it is unavoidable that they will talk bad about him behind his back. Mu Luo Shui told Zhao Jinyu that she've something for him. She called Yuan Ji to come. Yuan Ji comes with a gaif in her hand. Yuan Ji told Zhao Jinyu that this is a sachet made by the lady. Zhao Jinyu said that, how can a man like him? But when he noticed the black circles under Mu Luoxue's eyes, he picked that sachet and said that, it's suitable for a debauchee like him. He'll gladly accept it. Suddenly, housekeeper told Zhao Jinyu that, the Duje has summoned him. Zhao Jinyu said to Mu Luoxue that, he'll get going first. Mu Luoxue said, okay. Blue Sparrow was calling Zhao Jinyu asking him to don't abandon her. UNG asked Mu Luoxue that, what is she going to do with that Blue Sparrow? Mu Luoxue told UNG that, this bird is a rare spirit animal. If it is adequately nurtured, it can assist us in the future. Blue Sparrow called Mu Luoxue, evil woman. She don't want to be nurtured by Mu Luoxue. She was waiting until she escape. She was going to reveal Mu Luoxue's true nature to Zhao Jinyu. On the other hand, Mu Luoxue was thinking that, in this life, his dumb Taoist husband is very weak. So she have to leave some insurance for him. Yuan Ji told Mu Luoxue to don't worry. She said that. She will definitely feed the bird with the best fodder. On her back, Blue Sparrow was shouting at her that, Who wants to eat fodder? She Aya a human, a freaking human. Mu Luoxue thought that. The second son of the Huang clan suddenly went crazy. And recently there's been no movement from the Huang clan. They might not come and frame her anymore. The protocol officers sent for surveillance. And those trial marriages maids have all been handled due to her dumb Taoist husband messing around. Even the chaplain, Tian Yazi, also got injured by an unknown master. Except for the Chalcedoni mine being robbed, everything is progressing smoothly. Mu Luoxue realized that recently, there have been no more threats, unless something that didn't occur in her previous life unexpectedly happened. Mu Luoxue was happy thinking that, how can there be so many accidents? She thought that, she should not keep thinking about those groundless fears. At the same time, inside Zhao Chengwu's room, Zhao Jinyu was too shocked to find that the fifth prince left the mountain. Duke Zhao was too serious. He told Zhao Jinyu that the fifth prince should be arriving in the capital soon. Zhao Jinyu was surprised to hear that and asked Duke, who is the fifth prince again? Did their clan owe him money? Duke covered his face and said to Zhao Jinyu that it's not a surprise that Zhao Jinyu didn't know him. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that the fifth prince used to train in seclusion at the Dwelling Star Mountain, without care for worldly affairs. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that he only have to know 
The fifth prince is well versed in astrology, numerology. Zhao Jinyu thought about a fake astrologer and said to Duke, That aren't those Jiang Hu's tricksters. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that it would be good if it were that simple. The fifth prince is born with divine eyes that can see through people's luck. He's really skilled. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that his shameless act will be useless under fifth prince's eyes, and Zhao Jinyu's true nature that he have kept hidden will be exposed. Zhao Jinyu asked Duke that. What Duke is saying that idiot emperor asked him to come and test Zhao Jinyu. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that he have no idea why the fifth prince left the mountain, but fifth prince will definitely come and test Zhao Jinyu out. The fifth prince's divine eyes are far more useful than those spies. Zhao Jinyu try leaving the Zhou clan through the window with his things pack, telling Duke goodbye saying, he will now go to the countryside to hide away. Duke stops him. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that the fifth prince's divine eyes might be powerful, but it doesn't mean they have no way to confront it. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that he only have to go to the eastern suburbs Zhuantian Temple with Duke and ask for a person. Duke told Zhao Jinyu to bring his sword from the northern wilderness. Zhao Jinyu asked Duke that, aren't they just going to meet a person? Why should he bring the sword? Is there danger on the way there? Duke said that, it's not like that. It's just that Duke understand that person quite well. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that, that Ching Ping Zi is someone Duke Zhao have always wanted to cut in half, a real son of a bitch. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that it happened before Zhao Jinyu was born. That year, Duke led the soldiers to confront the Millennium Demon Kingdom. Duke told Ching Ping Zi that, later, Duke will lead the soldiers and charge in. As for the rearward defense, Duke will leave it to Ching Ping Zi. Ching Ping Zi told Duke that, it's not a problem. He told Duke to rest assured. Duke can leave the sister in law in his care. Duke gets angry at Ching Ping Zi and pull out his sword and told Ching Ping Zi that he must be punished according to the military law, but other soldiers stops Duke and told him to please calm down. Another day Duke told Ching Ping Zi that, currently, there's a lack of dependable experts in the camp. Duke will leave the mission of transporting military rations to Ching Ping Zi. Ching Ping Zi smiles and said to Duke that, a mission as dangerous as this can only be done by Ching Ping Zi. If Duke kneel down and beg him, he might consider doing it. Again after beating him, Duke pulled out his sword and said to Ching Ping Zi that he really deserved to be punished according to the military law. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that that's why Zhao Jinyu don't always have to be polite when asking someone for help. Some people are meant to be cut. Zhao Jinyu gave Duke a thumbs up and said that it's his first time knowing Duke have such a good temper, but to think that person is still alive. Duke told Zhao Jinyu to hurry up. He said that. The fifth prince also realizes the divine eye's weakness. If they keep delaying, they might beat them to it. On the other hand, fifth prince reached at the place where Ching Ping Zi was leaving. When fifth prince looks at that temple, he saw a huge turtle and snake, Silusion coming. That place is Xuan Tian Temple. Ching Ping Zi was seating on a chair. He was holding a liquor bottle. He said that, what kind of wind is blowing today? How did his poor temple deserve to have such an important guest visiting? Soldiers and the fifth prince was standing in front of him. Ching Ping Zi said that, this is quite extravagant. Fifth prince said to Ching Ping Zi that, he wishes to borrow the black tortoise diagram. Ching Ping Zi said to the prince that, the black tortoise diagram can block off the prince's divine eye. He asked the fifth prince that, is the prince afraid that others might borrow it to evade the examination? Who is the fifth prince watching out for? The Zhao clan. Ching Ping Zi said to the fifth prince that, if he is going to borrow something from others, shouldn't he at least let them know what he will use it for? Fifth Prince asked Ching Ping Zi, so what if he is aiming for the Zhao clan? Ching Ping Zi told Fifth Prince to don't worry. He said that Black Tortoise Diagram is his treasure for subduing the temple. He won't lend it to anyone. He asked the Fifth Prince to please go back. Fifth Prince asked Ching Ping Zi that, what if, he insists on borrowing it? Ching Ping Zi called Fifth Prince by his name which is Ji Ru Wan, and asked him that, Although his skills have rusted, do Fifth Prince really think he can deal with Ching Ping Zi with just a few useless troops? Ching Ping Zi told Fifth Prince that, How about he ponder on his limit first? A soldier shouted at Ching Ping Zi. Fifth Prince stops that soldier and said to Ching Ping Zi that, He only brought a few people here because he wanted to amicably settle this matter. Fifth Prince told Ching Ping Zi that, The Heavenly Thunder military totaled 2,000 men stand by at the bottom of the mountain. On the bottom of the mountain inside the carriage in which Fifth Prince was traveling, a white-haired man was seating. He is the Fifth Zhuguo, Bai Chuan. Ji Ruan told Ching Ping Zi that the Fifth Zhuguo, Bai Chuan, is also there. 
Fifth Prince said to Ching Ping Zi that he hoped Ching Ping Zi will act sensibly. This is the last time Fifth Prince will ask him, is he going to lend it to Fifth Prince or not? Ching Ping Zi was little surprised hearing that even Zhuguo has come. On the other side, Duke Zhao and Zhao Jinyu were coming there in their carriage with light speed. Ching Ping Zi was too nervous thinking. He remembered a time when he was injured and Duke Zhao was carrying in. Duke was telling him that they will reach the military camp soon. He have to hold on. At that time, Ching Ping Zi smiles and said to Duke that since Duke have begged him, then let Duke's son, Zhao Wuji, recognize Ching Ping Zi as his godfather, and he'll stay alive. Duke Zhao asked Ching Ping Zi that, should they be really discussing it now? But when Duke saw Ching Ping Zi's condition, he told Ching Ping Zi that he promise it he will do it. Fifth Prince asked him again, will he lend it to him or not? Ching Ping Zi gets angry and told Fifth Prince to fuck off. Ching Ping Zi shouted that he won't lend it. On the other hand, Zhao Jinyu asked Duke that, is the Taoist temple hiding the black tortoise diagram located on such a godforsaken small mountain? Duke told him that, the mountain doesn't have to be high. It will be famous as long as there's an immortal dwelling in it. Zhao Jinyu make fun of him saying, an old ignorant person is showing off his knowledge now. Suddenly Duke noticed a bird flying towards them. That bird seats on Duke's finger. There was a letter tied on its leg. Duke get that letter asking, who's the letter from? On that letter it was written that, the black tortoise diagram has been snatched by Ji Ruyuan. Duke recognized it that, it's Ching Pingzi's writing. Duke said to Zhao Jinyu that, it's bad. They have to leave. The black tortoise diagram has fallen into the fifth prince's hand. Zhao Jinyu looks behind his carriage. The fifth prince was behind them. Zhao Jinyu said, looks like they are too late. Fifth prince said to Duke that, he was wondering whose aura is so overbearing. So it was Duke Dingbang. Prince said to Duke that, it's been a while since they last met. Why don't they have a chat? Duke told Zhao Jinyu to hide well. Duke will deal with this. Duke greets Fifth Prince and said, It was Prince Ping Wen. What a coincidence. Duke told Fifth Prince that he is alone right now, and he going to, before he could complete his words, someone called the Fifth Prince. It was Bai Chuan, who was standing in front of Duke's carriage. Duke was surprised seeing him. Bai Chuan said to Duke that, The Zhao clan's young master is inside. Why doesn't he come out and meet them? Fifth Prince looks at the Duke and thought that, Zhao Cheng Wu, the slaughterer of a thousand miles. Even after so many years, his aura is as fierce as always. Prince can feel it from miles away. Fifth Prince said to Duke that, he has left the capital for twenty years and never met the young master before. Since he's here, why don't they have a chat together? Duke said to Fifth Prince that, his son unfortunately has caught a cold. He is afraid now is not a good time. Duke thought that, the Fifth Prince has come prepared. It won't be easy to deal with him. Fifty Prince told Duke to don't worry. He said that he happened to have some knowledge of medicine. Fifth Prince told Bai Chuan to please help the young master. Bai Chuan smiles. He turned around and said, Okay to Fifty Prince. Bai Chuan walks towards the Duke's carriage. But Duke grabbed his hand. Bai Chuan smiles and asked Duke Tot, What's the meaning of this? Duke said to Bai Chuan that, How can he trouble a mighty Zhuguo for something as insignificant as this? Duke will do it himself. Bai Chuan smiles and told Duke to please don't let the prince wait for too long. Duke goes inside the carriage and said to Zhao Jinyu that he can't hold them off anymore. Other than Heavenly Thunder military, the fifth Zhuguo Bai Chuan is also here, Zhao Jinyu asked Duke. That should they attack them, the fifth prince and Heavenly Thunder military will meet their death within an incense stick of time. Bai Chuan has the best flying technique among all the Zhuguo, but Zhao Jinyu have some confidence in holding him back. Duke was surprised. He asked Zhao Jinyu that, can his strength really rival a Zhuguo? Zhao Jinyu told Duke that, he is invincible if they are talking about one-on-one -on -one battle. Duke told Zhao Jinyu that, now is not the time to be bluffing. He told Zhao Jinyu to run immediately if the situation turns sour. Don't bother with anything else. Duke will deal with them. Zhao Jinyu said, okay, he'll keep it in mind. Zhao Jinyu looks at his sword and said, thank God he brought it. When both of them comes out of the carriage, Duke was grabbing Zhao Jinyu's ears. Zhao Jinyu shouted, Tot, why the heck should he be the one to go out and meet him? Why doesn't he come and meet Zhao Jinyu instead? Duke said to Zhao Jinyu that, the person who wants to meet him is a prince. Duke told Zhao Jinyu follow him quickly. Both of them were acting. When Zhao Jinyu saw Bai Chuan, he called Duke old man and said to him that, why didn't he tell him there was such beauty here? He would have come down immediately. Zhao Jinyu goes to Bai Chuan calling him beauty. He started asking him what's him name. Is he married? Bai Chuan said that, 
he heard that the son of Duke Zhao is a ridiculous person. From the way Zhao Jinyu act, he guessed the rumors are true. When the fifth prince looked at them, he thought that Bai Chuan and Zhao Cheng Wu's auras are too strong. He can't see properly from this distance. Fifth prince asked Zhao Jinyu to please come here. Let him diagnose his cold. Zhao Jinyu looks at Duke. Duke told him to go, Zhao Jinyu said. Where did this prince come from? Zhao Jinyu asked fifth prince. That what is he barking about? Can he see Zhao Jinyu is busy? Do we know who he is? Both of them look at each other. Zhao Jinyu thought that, if fifth prince really saw something, the moment his expression changed, Zhao Jinyu will kill him off. Bai Chuan was bored, but suddenly he felt the killing intent. He goes in between fifth prince and Zhao Jinyu. He told Ji Ruyuan to be careful. Fifth prince told Bai Chuan that, there's no need, fifth prince said to Duke. Ding Bang Tot, there's no major problem with Zhao Jinyu. He only has to rest for a few days and take care of his body. In addition, a good sword should match a hero. While leaving Fifth Prince told Duke that, Zhao Jinyu's sword, it's better for Duke Zhao to take it back to use. Zhao Jinyu gets angry asking him, what did he mean? When they left Zhao Jinyu, asked Duke that, this does this mean Fifth Prince didn't see through him. Zhao Jinyu smiles and said to Duke, that the Fifth Prince's eyes are not as good as he think. Oregon is it because Zhao Jinyu's aura is mediocre. Duke said to Zhao Jinyu Tot, with Zhao Jinyu's cultivation level, there's no way his aura will be mediocre. He said that it feels weird, maybe 50 prince saw through Zhao Jinyu, but didn't dare to say it out loud. Zhao Jinyu thought that there is no way. Zhao Jinyu kept looking at fifth prince's face just now, but there were no changes. Duke told Zhao Jinyu to be more careful for the time being. Zhao Jinyu touched his chest. Im saw that sachet that Mu Luo Shue give him. He thought that, didn't this sachet get hot just now? Suddenly Duke shouted at Zhao Jinyu, asking that, what is he spacing out for? Duke will leave without him if he don't hurry. Zhao Jinyu said, yeah, I'm coming. On the other hand, Yuan Ji was feeding Blue Sparrow some insects. Yuan Ji asked Mu Luo Shui that, the great general had previously brought her many treasures, but why did she use them all to refine the heavenly secrets talisman? She even gave it to the young master. Because of that, she can only use the leftovers to cultivate. Is it worthwhile? Blue Sparrow was not eating those insects, Mu Luok Shui told Yuan Ji to wait until she have someone she love, then she will understand. Mu Luok Shui smiles while drinking her tea and said to Yuan Ji that, it doesn't matter whether it's worthwhile or not, if it's for someone you love dearly. Blue Sparrow was chose seeing those insects. In the past, in a snowing mountain, in front of a house a man was seating outside, Bai Chuan was there in his original form. He thought that, are they here to become disciples again? Humans are always the same. They always came rushing in for imaginary power. He was walking, seeing many soldiers' dead body. He thought that, they're even willing to go as far as killing each other. Having them stubbornly stay here is also troublesome. The fifth prince was seating in the snow. His body was covered in snow, Bai Chuan said to fifth prince to just return. He told him that, that old fortune teller inside has never accepted any disciple before. Ji Ruyuan thanked Bai Chuan for information and told him that he can just ignore him. Bai Chuan asked him that, do he long for the ability to observe fate? She asked Fifth Prince that, what will he do once he obtain it? Is it for power, status, Oregon? Is it women? Fifth Prince said something to him. Bai Chuan could not understand what he said and goes near his face asking him, what did you say? But when Bai Chuan saw Fifth Prince's condition he was too shocked. Fifty Prince's face was covered in snow. There was ice all over his face. Fifth Prince said that, it is for people under heaven. That was just a dream of Bai Chuan. He wakes up and while rubbing his eyes, he asked the Fifth Prince that, how long did he sleep? Fifth Prince was reading a book. He told him that he was sleeping for around two hours. He told him that there's still some time before they arrive in the capital. He can sleep more. Bai Chuan asked him about Zhao Jinyu. Is there really no problem with him? Ji Ruyuan told Bai Chuan that Zhao Jinyu's aura is very mediocre. It's a good thing. At first, Fifth Prince thought Zhao Jinyu might be that calamity, Bai Chuan said is that so. He thought that, that moment of killing intent gave him palpitations. But Ru Yuan's eyes have never been wrong, and the black tortoise diagram is with them. Was it just his imagination? Fifth Prince called Bai Chuan and said to him that, he is not obligated to accompany him to the capital. He will become weaker after leaving Dwelling Star Mountain. Bai Chuan asked Fifth Prince that. Then how about he return to the Dwelling Star Mountain with him? Fifth Prince told him that he can't. He asked him that. He have also witnessed his divination. 
there'll be a calamity appearing in the Imperial Court. The world will fall into chaos if they don't dispose of it. The reason he left the mountain was to help the Zhou dynasty deal with this calamity. Bai Chuan asked him that. Didn't his master also give a reading on his fate? He will die on this trip. Before Fifth Prince could say anything, Bai Chuan told him that, It's fine. He asked him to wake him up once they've reached the capital. Ji Ruyuan has nothing to say to him. The only thing he can say was okay. When Zhao Jinyu was polishing his sword on his way back home, Duke Zhao was very angry. He said to Zhao Jinyu that, Bai Chuan really hates it when people think of him as a girl, and Zhao Jinyu still dare to joke around like that. Duke was terrified that both of them were going to fight. Zhao Jinyu told Duke that it wouldn't have been a problem. He told Duke that everyone knows that Bai Chuan hates it when people consider him a girl, but no one knows why. Bai Chuan simply does not want the fifth prince to have hard feelings. Since Bai Chuan has become a boy for the sake of the fifth prince, Zhao Jinyu told Duke that that time when he joked about Bai Chuan being a beauty, the fifth prince was far away and couldn't have heard anything, so Bai Chuan didn't snap. Duke was surprised to hear that. He asked Zhao Jinyu that. Didn't Zhao Jinyu say he is unaware of the fifth prince? Why do we know so much about them? Zhao Jinyu told Duke that. He didn't remember fifth prince at first, but he immediately remembered once he saw Bai Chuan. Duke knows Zhao Jinyu. Love listening to songs? There are a lot of stories about them going around. Zhao Jinyu told Duke that Bai Chuan is a mountain god. A god has no gender. They choose their own gender when they shapeshift. At first, Bai Chuan wanted to be a girl. But in the end, he decided to be a boy. Duke asked him why Bai Chuan decided to be a boy. Zhao Jinyu told Duke that, There is a song. I shall connect with your heart as you connect with the world. Not for binding our hair, but to be compatriots. Zhao Jinyu referred to Third Prince and Bai Chuan as a pair of heroes that makes people envious. Duke said to Zhao Jinyu that, That pair of heroes were hoping to kill Zhao Jinyu just now. Duke asked Zhao Jinyu that, Isn't he the best in the world? What is he envious of? Zhao Jinyu smiles and told Duke that an ordinary greybeard like him wouldn't understand it. Zhao Jinyu looks at his sword and thought that it's just that everyone has a different standpoint. There's no right or wrong. And the strength of a single person in front of the torrent of time is nothing but insignificant. The so-called best in the world is nothing but a tiny clow amidst the decaying grass in this chaotic world. In the age of chaos, Everyone has no choice but to hold on to their precious things. Some do it for the Empire, some do it for their Emperor. As for Zhao Jinyu, all he wants is to protect the things around him. In this life, he is never going to have regrets anymore. And to ensure that, he is willing to do anything. While the Zhao clan's father and son duo are still outside. On the other side, Imperial Consort's brother has become an idiot. He was behaving like an idiot. When his father minister Huang saw him doing things like idiot, he was worried thinking that it's been half a month. Just who did this to his son? Suddenly, some kind of strong smell started glowing around him. Minister Huang cover his nose because he knows that there's something wrong with this smell. He was surprised to see that his son and the maid fell asleep after breathing in that air. Suddenly a voice come telling Minister Huang to not worry. That voice was from Yuan Ji. Both Yuan Ji and Mu Luo Shui come there while covering their faces. Yuan Ji said to Minister Huang that this is just a regular sleeping drug. He will be able to withstand it since Minister Huang is in the Dark Demon Realm. Minister Huang didn't reply to her. Yuan Ji asked Minister Huang, is he willing to make a trade with her master? When Minister Huang looked at them, he smiles. He get on his knees and said, This officer greets the third princess, Mu Luo Shui. Both Mu Luo Shui and Yuan Ji were surprised. Mu Luo Shui asked him, how did he know it's her? Minister Huang told Mu Luo Shui that a few years ago, when he first met Mu Luo Shui, he already felt that she might not be a mindless idiot. Moreover, not long ago, he happened to mention Her Highness in front of his daughter, the Imperial Consort, and she began trembling in fear. Mu Luo Shui, ask Minister Huang that. She covered her face and remained silent. How did he figure out it was her? Minister Huang told her that. That's because he noticed that both of their clothes are wet. Aside from the front and back doors, there is another hidden door in the Huang residence. It's at the back of the fake mountain on the pond side, and that fake mountain happened to be wet. Other than the Huang clan's members, the others who are aware of the existence of this hidden door, there's only Mu Luo Shui, the third princess, who has been staying in this Huang residence for a long time. Only when so many coincidences piled up did he dare to be sure it was her. Mu Luo Shui removed her cover, saying, 
It seems Minister Huang is an intelligent person. She told Minister Huang to stand up. Minister Huang stand up and said to Muluok Shui that he is wondering, why has His Highness come and looked for him? Muluok Shui told him that she come to make a trade with him. She said to Minister Huang that the Hidden Immortal Summit is going to open soon. She want to go in and have a look. That's why she want Minister Huang to help her sneak into the army. Minister Huang ask her if she wants him to deceive the emperor. Mu Luo Shui ask Minister Huang that, in exchange, she will cure Huang Xingsheng's crazy illness. What do we think about it? Minister Huang smiles like devil and said to Mu Luo Shui that, this son of his is garbage. He won't be of any use even if he is cured. But deceiving the emperor is treason that may cause Minister Huang's entire clan to be eliminated. He said this trade is not beneficial. Mu Luo Shui thought that he's exactly the same as in her past life, skilled in calculating. Mu Luo Shui said to Minister Huang that the witch clan is still seizing Huang Yurong using her natal poisonous insect. She can also handle that. In addition, inside the hidden immortal summit, there is a primary fetus that can make a person young again. She can also find it and give it to Minister Huang. Mu Luo Shui said to Minister Huang that if he is still unsatisfied with this, she'll just leave. Minister Huang thanked Mu Luo Shui for her compassion. He bowed down in front of Mu Luo Shui, saying, This officer is willing to serve Her Highness like a dog and a horse. Mu Luo Shui looks at Minister Huang, thinking that he must be feeling smug right now. Mu Luo Shui smiles, thinking that since she could exploit Minister Huang in her previous life, she can do so in this life too. On the other hand, Emperor Ji Xinga was drinking with immortals. He said to them that, both immortals have traveled long distances to assist the imperial court. This must be the fortune of the Zhou dynasty. Ji Xingqi never expected Chun Yangzi, one of the masters from the Nine Peaks in Taiyi sect, to come. Chun Yangzi is known as Master of Eternal Thunder and is already in the Light Immortal Realm. He's stronger than the chaplain. Ji Xingqi smiles, thinking that he can secure help from such a person. In that case, he'll be able to relax about the group going to Hidden Immortal Summit. Chun Yangzi asked Emperor Ji Xinghe that his conditions remain the same as what he wrote in the letter. What do he think? Ji Xinghe asked Chun Yangzi that. What do he mean? Chun Yangzi said to Emperor Ji Xinghe that he will represent the illusionary peak to assist the Zhou dynasty for 20 years. In exchange, Ji Xinghe must grant the authority to develop the hidden immortal summit with the Zhou dynasty. Ji Xinghe remember that. That's what Chun Yangzi wrote in his letter. Ji Xinghe thought taught, as the saying goes, Divine soldiers under heaven all came from the Hidden Immortal Summit. Maybe some divine soldier will also be born this time. However, using dead objects in exchange for the assistance of a light immortal for 20 years. Ji Xinga smiles and said it's worthwhile. But Ji Xinga has a question that, can he really trust both of them? Ji Xinga looks at the girl who comes with Chun Yangzi thinking, what is this girl's identity? Even the Taiyi sect's peak master is watching her expression. Emperor Ji Xinghe said to Chun Yangzi that, he still haven't introduced her. Who is she? Chun Yangzi told his majesty that she is his disciple, Mu Jin. Mu Jin greets the emperor. Ji Xinghe said to Mu Jin that fairy doesn't have to be so polite. Please sit down and talk. Ji Xinghe thought that do Chun Yangzi take him as an idiot that he will believe him that she is his disciple? Ji Xinghe said to Chun Yangzi that they can develop the hidden immortal summit together, but he have a condition. Chun Yangzi asked emperor Ji Xinghe to speak his mind. Ji Xinghe asked Chun Yangzi that previously he summoned the prince and the vassal state to send troops to go and explore the hidden immortal summit together. Do he know about it? Chun Yangzi told him that. He've heard about it. Ji Xinghe laughs and said to Chun Yangzi that his condition is, this time during the trip to the hidden immortal summit, he want those people sent by the prince and vassal states to be all dead. Chun Yangzi was shocked to hear that. Chun Yangzi was thinking taught. Tens of thousands of people. And aren't they all loyal to the Zhou dynasty? Suddenly, Mu Jin called Chun Yangzi name softly. Chun Yangzi looks at the emperor and told him his answer. After the banquet, both Mu Jin and Chun Yangzi were walking. Chun Yangzi said that those armies are all loyal to the Zhou dynasty, but Ji Xinghe racked his brain just to plot against his own people. Mu Jin called Chun Yangzi by his name and asked him that did he cultivate on the mountain for so long that his brain became a stone? Chun Yangzi was surprised to hear that question. Mu Jin told him that Zhou Dynasty was founded only two generations ago. There is still the southern border, the northern wasteland, and the Millennium Demon Kingdom surrounding the borders. Then, there are the princes and vassals. Each and every one of them could be a threat. 
Who knows if they will revolt and invade the country? However, Huang Yu, under Ji Xinghe's command, can be considered capable. In the last few years, the imperial court has created three direct militaries, although the total number is not more than 100,000 people. The other 500,000 troops are all under the Zhao clan. Chun Yangzi asked Mu Jin that, Why don't Zhao clan just take over the emperor's seat? Mu Jin told Chun Yangzi that the Zhou dynasty still had nine Zhuguo supporting it. Every one of them is a one-man army. Normally, the Zhuguo will not obey the imperial order. Still, if the Zhao clan is really rebelling, those Zhuguo will definitely intervene. Mu Jin said that, this time, the start of the Hidden Immortal Summit is Ji Xinghe's best chance to reduce the internal threat. Chun Yangzi said that, it's so boring. Does everyone in the imperial household enjoy doing things in a roundabout way? Mu Jin smiles and asks Chun Yangzi, that isn't this quite good, isn't this great? Otherwise, how will they capitalize on the opportunity? Mu Jin smiles. Thinking that Ji Xinghe has yet to learn what the actual value of Hidden Immortal Summit is, as well as her beloved Master Sword King. Mu Jin has been waiting for him in the Taiyi sect for three years. Why haven't he arrived yet? Mu Jin was blushing like a fangirl, thinking that, since Master Sword King is not coming, Mu Jin will go and find him. In this life, he should be able to pay attention to Mu Jin. Sometime later, in Zhao resident, Mu Luoxue asked Yuan Ji. Are they still not back yet? Yuan Ji told Mu Luo Shui that Duke Zhao's usual carriage has yet to return to the residence. Mu Luo Shui said, That's good. It saves her from having to explain where she went. Mu Luo Shui said that the blue sparrow hasn't eaten anything all day. She told Yuan Si to bring something for it to eat. Yuan Si said okay, and when she looks at the blue sparrow's cage, she saw that blue sparrow is not in his cage. Both Mu Luo Shui and Mu Jin were too shocked to see the empty cage. Yuan Ji asked Mu Luo Shui that, Young Master's bird is gone. What should they do now? Mu Luo Shui was too confused. She shouted at Yuan Ji that, What else can they do? They should quickly search for it. Zhao Jinyu finally reached home. He was too tired. Zhao Jinyu remembers that his older sister seems to be coming back home tomorrow. It's been so long since they last met. She's going to cause trouble once she's back. Zhao Jinyu suddenly remembers that. She doesn't know that Zhao Jinyu is engaged. Zhao Jinyu noticed something. It was Blue Sparrow. Blue Sparrow sit on Zhao Jinyu's shoulder. Zhao Jinyu asked Blue Sparrow, Why did she come back? Blue Sparrow was very angry. She said to Zhao Jinyu that she think he need to clarify something. She is a human, not a bird. Zhao Jinyu looks at her and asks her that. It has been a while since he's seen her. How did her cultivation rise so much, Blue Sparrow? Remember that, how UNG was feeding her some spiritual pills forcefully. Although Blue Sparrow don't want to admit it, those weird pills seem quite useful. Blue Sparrow said to Zhao Jinyu that, of course, it is because she is talented. Blue Sparrow told Zhao Jinyu that Mu Luo Shui is deceiving him. Don't he care at all? Zhao Jinyu thought that Blue Sparrow is talking about how Mu Luo Shui and Yuan Ji were trying to catch Blue Sparrow again in courtyard. He asked her if Blue Sparrow is talking about that. Blue Sparrow said, That's right. It's about that matter. Zhao Jinyu told Blue Sparrow to don't worry about it. Doesn't it look fun? Blue Sparrow was thinking that, just as she guessed. Zhao Jinyu is well aware that that woman is not simple, as expected of the high priest. But the next day, Mu Luo Shui dyed a crow in blue color and gave it to Zhao Jinyu, saying it's Blue Sparrow. When Zhao Jinyu asked her about it, she started acting like a dumb right away. But later on, she told him the truth. Next day, Mu Jin and Chun Yangzi were in an inn. Chun Yangzi said to Mu Jin that, This capital sure is prosperous. However, the liquor here is far inferior to that of the Taiyi sect. But Mu Jin didn't reply to him. She was looking outside the window. Mu Jin was looking at Zhao residents. Chun Yangzi said to Mu Jin that he have accompanied her for half a day. He is fine staying with her while she wait for someone, but she cannot just leave him here talking to himself. A Mu Jin said to Chun Yangzi that she did not request him to accompany her. He may leave if he is unable to wait any longer. But suddenly she stopped talking. When she saw Duke Zhao and Zhao Jinyu coming out of their residence, Mu Jin started blushing. Hard a pair in her eyes asks she saw her master sword, King Zhao Jinyu. In Mu Jin's points of view, Zhao Jinyu looks like some king of prince from a romantic novel. She was too happy because she finally met him again. But suddenly, Si saw that a woman is standing beside Zhao Jinyu, and that woman is Mu Luo Shu. Mu Jin face turned from a fangirl to killer girl. In a instead, Mu Jin called Mu Luo Shui bitch 
Mu Jin said that. This Mu Luo Shui bitch dared to approach the Sword King. She'll kill her. Chun Yang Zi get Mu Jin's drink and ask her that. If she is not going to drink her, then he'll help her drink it. But Mu Jin's all the attention was on Zhao Jin Yu and Mu Luo Shui. Mu Jin stand up and throw the table saying she is going to kill Mu Luo Shui. Chun Yang Zi was surprised thinking, why is she reacting like that? He just wanted to drink one more cup. Mu Jin calmed herself because she knows that she have to calm down. Mu Jin left from there. Chun Yang Zi told her to wait for him. He asked her where is she going. Mu Jin is unsure why Mu Luo Shui is here, but she need to figure something out quickly. From the ground, Zhao Jinyu looks at that inn. Because just now, he felt a familiar aura. Zhao Jinyu's older sister, Ru Shuang come back from the border. Duke Zhao asks her if she is tired. He'll ask someone to draw hot water for her. Ru Shuang told Duke that she is not in a rush. Ru Shuang turned around and asked Zhao Jinyu that why is he getting married so soon? Zhao Jinyu laughs and asks her, Is she jealous? Ru Shuang looks at him angrily. She looks at Mu Luo Shui and said that she've heard some rumors about the third princess. Ru Shuang goes to Zhao Jinyu and silently said to him that if he believed this marriage to the imperial household has wronged him, they can do something about it. Zhao Jinyu grabbed Mu Luo Shui's hand and asked Ru Shuang, What is she talking about? He said that a debauchee matched with an idiot. Isn't this a perfect combination? Ru Shuang looks at Zhao Jinyu thinking, Is this still my little brother? She remembers that previously Zhao Jinyu acts like women will only affect his speed of drawing out sword. Ru Shuang even thought that Zhao Jinyu might be interested in boys instead. Ru Shuang grabbed Zhao Jinyu's clothes saying, She have remembered something. Before Zhao Jinyu could say anything, she dragged him away. Ru Shuang asked Mu Luoshui to let her borrow his brother for a minute. Mu Luoshui was confused about what is happening. Ru Shuang asked Zhao Jinyu to return her money. Zhao Jinyu tried to play dumb asking her what money. Ru Shuang told him to don't act dumb. She was talking about military spending. Zhao Jinyu have secretly made so many pills that can increase cultivation. He even burned many treasures on purpose to deceive others. Ru Shuang asked Zhao Jinyu that, Do we know how many pills she helped Zhao Jinyu sell while she was at the border? She didn't even take one for herself. Zhao Jinyu asked her how much does she want? Zhao Jinyu showed Zhao Jinyu her five fingers saying this much. Zhao Jinyu said five tails. Sure, he can give that much. Ru Shuang told Zhao Jinyu that she want enough money to feed 50,000 people. When Zhao Jinyu hear 50,000 people, he asked Ru Shuang, is she serious? Ru Shuang asked Zhao Jinyu that he think there will be no hindrance at the border, so she want to raise personal armies. Zhao Jinyu asked her, what is she trying to do? Rebel. Ru Shuang told Zhao Jinyu that he don't have to worry about it. All she want to do is provide an escape route for the Zhao clan. Zhao Jinyu smiles and asks her, what route? Death route. She should spend her time on something other than plotting with that brain of her. Ru Shuang raised her leg and hit the wall behind Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu asked her, Is she pissed off? He told her, She can't hide anything from others. Ru Shuang gets angry and asks Zhao Jinyu that, Isn't he also hide a bunch of witch clan members? Zhao Jinyu laughs and asks Ru Shuang that, In all her life have she ever subdued Zhao Jinyu in a fight? Ru Shuang didn't say anything. He asked her if she ever beat Zhao Jinyu when they play chess. Ru Shuang was too angry. Zhao Jinyu asked Ru Shuang that, what makes her think that? She can accomplish what Zhao Jinyu did. Ru Shuang gets super pissed. Duke Zhao said, Mu Luo Shui to rest assured. Those siblings have always had good relationships. But Duke Zhao was to shock to see both Zhao Jinyu and Ru Shuang fight like children. Chun Yangzi comes back after checking the place where Tian Yazi was attacked. Mu Jin asked him about the situation. Chun Yangzi told her that, he looked into it. And the sword chi traces on Tian Yazi's body resemble their sect's technique. Mu Jin asked him if has anyone from their sect gone down the mountain recently. Chun Yangzi told her that there is some who come down the mountain, but there is none capable of piercing Tian Yi Pavilion's numerous restrictions with a sword and injuring Tian Yazi. Mu Jin thought that, is it the swordmaster Zhao Jinyu? But she then thought that in this life, the swordmaster hasn't joined the Tai Yi sect yet. He shouldn't have any cultivation. He has always been in the Zhao residence. When Mu Jin thought about how Mu Luo Shui was clinging to the Zhao Jin Yu again, she gets more angry. Mu Jin asked Chun Yang Zi to help her get rid of a person. Chun Yang Zi was confused. He asked her who is that person that she want to get rid of. And that night, Chun Yang Zi was goes to Zhao resident dressed like an assassin. Chun Yang Zi thought that it's best if you don't use the sex technique for these shady jobs. Chun Yang Zi picked some human shape paper doll and said that 
He holds no grudges, but today shall be the day that person shall die. He activates his spiritual energy on those pepper dolls and use his ghost-controlling art. Five aggregates dark spirits to awake the ghost killers. Chun Yang Zi said that everyone has their own destiny. Please don't resent him, pitiful mindless princess. He ordered those ghosts to go towards Zhou Resident. All this ghost entered Zhou Resident on the other side. Mu Luoshu was with Yuan Ji in her room. She was telling Yuan Ji to write a litter on the other side of the house. Zhao Jinyu was taking a bath. Suddenly, Zhao Jinyu opens his eyes because he felt someone. After completing that letter, Yuan Ji asked Mu Luo Shui if that all to write. Mu Luo Shui told her that, that's all for now, and asked Yue Xie to gather them as soon as possible. Yuan Ji turned around to greet Mu Luo Shui, but she was too shocked to see that a ghost killer was about to attack Mu Luo Shui for behind. Yuan Ji shouted, Spirit Lord, watch out! Mu Luo Shui turned around to see what is behind her. That ghost killer's knife was to close to Mu Luok Shui's eyes. But before that knife could touch his Mu Luok Shu, a sword with sword chi on it, killed that ghost killer. Mu Luok Shui was surprised to see that, suddenly, other four ghost killers attacked Mu Luok Shui. But before Mu Luok Shui could react, that sword killed all those killers in an instead. Mu Luok Shui was surprised thinking who saved her just now, and to maintain such a strong sword chi from such a small hole, who is it? Outside the Zhou resident, Chun Yang Zi was confused, because his connections suddenly break off. Chun Yang Zi saw a bright light coming from Zhao, resident. That light was that sword. It attacked Chun Yang Zi. He barely dodged that sword. Chun Yang Zi back off from there. Chun Yang Zi was scared after seeing a terrifying sword Qi, he thought, was an expert of this caliber actually hidden in the Zhao residence. A ghost-like thing appear in front of Chun Yang Zi. That was Zhao Jin Yu who was wearing his war mask. Zhao Jinyu said to Chun Yang Zi that, that was really commonable for Ji Xinga to release ghosts here. Zhao Jinyu asked him if he have any last words. Chun Yang Zi relished that he could get caught. He knows that he need to escape. He back off from Zhao Jinyu, thinking this distance should be enough for him to escape. But Zhao Jinyu covered that distance in an instant. Chun Yang Zi was surprised thinking what just happened. Zhao Jinyu pull out his sword and attack Chun Yang Zi. Chun Yang Zi back off again. Zhao Jinyu again attack Chun Yang Zi with his sword. Chun Yang Zi asked him to wait a moment, but Zhao Jinyu didn't stop and attack Chun Yang Zi, but he could not touch Chun Yang Zi. Because of a barrier, Zhao Jinyu relished that Chun Yang Zi has a protective treasure. It was a barrier bracelet which Chun Yang Zi was wearing. Chun Yang Zi tried to talk with Zhao Jinyu, saying that one should spare people where it is possible. They can talk first. But Zhao Jinyu attacked him again. Zhao Jinyu stopped then and said to Chun Yang Zi that Chun Yang Zi seems like a hitman. If he tell Zhao Jinyu who is the person behind him, he shall leave Chun Yang Zi's corpse intact. Zhao Jinyu use his sword controlling art. Eight points of sword domain. Many Qi sword appear all over Chun Yang Zi. He relished that. Zhao Jinyu is trying to keep him here. A sword formation appear around Chun Yang Zi and Zhao Jinyu. Chun Yang Zi said to Zhao Jinyu that this place is the capital. If they continue to fight, Zhuguos will arrive. Zhao Jinyu grabbed his sword and asked Chun Yang Zi. Why do we assume that his bracelet can keep him safe until the Juguo arrive? Zhao Jinyu appear behind Chun Yang Zi. Suddenly and was about to attack Chun Yang Zi. Chun Yang Zi was too surprised. Zhao Jinyu used his slashing epoch technique and attacked Chun Yang Zi. Chun Yang Zi's hand became numb. Chun Yang Zi looks at his hand and thought, Tot, this skill cut off a person's force. Instead he body. Chun Yang Zi gets angry. He called thunder to come forth. Chun Yang Zi change himself and goes into his true immortal form. He said to Zhao Jinyu that he will fight Zhao Jinyu till death. Zhao Jinyu, after seeing that assassin-looking guy using Taiyi Orthodox sect Great Thunder Dharma, relished that as he. Zhao Jinyu's senior brother, Chun Yang Zi. Chun Yang Zi attacked Zhao Jinyu with his thunder sword. Qi. Zhao Jinyu moved his finger to counterattack Chun Yang Zi with his sword Qi. There was a huge blast. Zhao Jinyu thought that it's no wonder that assassin's voice sounds familiar. Zhao Jinyu remembers that. In his past life, only Chun Yang Zi and Zhao Jinyu learned the thunder art technique. Zhao Jinyu was thinking that, why is the senior brother here? He has no reason to confront Zhao clan. Zhao Jinyu knows that his senior brother is simple-minded. He must have been exploited by others. Zhao Jinyu was thinking, what should he do? He can't let his senior brother go. But he also can't leave it alone because he don't know what his senior brother will do when the time comes. Zhao Jinyu thought that he have no other choice. He can only make his senior brother recuperate like the chaplain for a few months. Both Zhao Jinyu and Chun Yang Zi were thinking that 
They will end this in fifteen rounds. Suddenly Bai Chuan a pair there, he said to Zhao Jinyu and Chun Yangzi, that both of them are having fun, can he join in? Eunuch Hai was also there. He asked them that, how daring of them to be so audacious in the capital, what do they take the Zhou dynasty for? Both Zhao Jinyu and Chun Yangzi were surprised to see them there. Zhao Jinyu thought that, even if it is Bai Chuan, it's too fast for her to arrive here from the palace. But he thought that, it's been a long time since she returned to the capital with the fifth prince. It seems they came out for a walk. The old eunuch might have been accompanying them. Suddenly a thought hit Zhao Jinyu that, if Bai Chuan is here then, does it mean the fifth prince is also there? When Zhao Jinyu saw fifth prince, he thought that fifth prince has the divine eye. Zhao Jinyu launched his sword qi towards fifth prince. Both Bai Chuan and eunuch Hai turned around and goes to save fifth prince, Bai Chuan. Gets angry asking how dare they attack Ji Ruyuan. But no one was in the sky. Chun Yangzi got on a belighting thinking. There sure are lots of hidden experts in the capital. He almost got caught. Suddenly a arrow comes flying and pierce in Chun Yangzi's chest. The one who released that arrow was Mu Luo Shu. She said that the enemy shall be eradicated completely. Mu Luo Shu was tired because it's still difficult for her to use the sun bow as of now. Mu Luo Shu thought that. Was it a person from the Zhao clan who helped her just now? She had no idea her husband was hiding a light immortal expert. Mu Luo Shu was worried thinking, who could it be who wants to kill her? Yuanji asked her if she is okay. Mu Luo Xue was thinking that, is it the Imperial Family or the Witch Clan, Oregon? Did she somehow unknowingly offend any light immortal? Mu Luo Xue make a face like villain and said that it doesn't matter. Although the Sun Bao didn't manage to kill that assassin, the mark has been carved. If he dares to come again, she will do everything in her capacity to kill him. Mu Luo Xue asked Yuanji to bring her paper and brush. She want to refine some magic treasure. She told Yuan Ji to ask Yue Xin to help her find some materials. Mu Luo Xue was sitting on the chair with her head down. She said that, even though things are different from her past life, how can she endanger her husband because of her? Even in her critical situation, Mu Luo Xue was worried about Zhao Jinyu. When Mu Jin was in the room, she heard door opening sound. She realized that it is Chun Yangzi. She asked him how did it go. But to her surprise, Chun, Yangzi was seriously injuries. She asked him how did he get such serious injuries. Chun Yangzi told her that he got careless this time. When Chun Yangzi thought about what happened to him today, he realized that he had been staying in the mountains for far too long. He had no idea such an expert existed in the world. Mu Jin asked him if she should return to Taiyi Sek to get someone to come and heal him. Chun Yangzi told her that there's no need. No matter what happened, he is still one of the nine peak masters. He can handle it by himself. Chun Yangzi asked Mu Jin if she can guard him for three days. Mu Jin said, she will do that. Mu Jin asked Chun Yangzi if Mu Luo Shui is dead. Chun Yangzi didn't say anything first. Then he told her that Mu Luo Shui might still be well and alive. When Mu Jin heard that her soul almost left her body, Mu Jin started hitting Chun Yangzi saying that an earth immortal like him can't even kill an ordinary human. He is totally useless. Mu Jin stops hitting him and ask him if his identity was also exposed. Chun Yangzi told Mu Jin that he got forced into using the thunder art technique. But if he is lucky, he might not get caught. When Mu Jin hear that, she started beating Chun Yangzi. On the other hand, Eunuch Hai was recognized. Chun Yangzi's great thunder dharma attack. He was thinking if it was done by the immortal from Taiyi sect. But he doesn't know about the other person. Eunuch Hai's hand is still numb from receiving one of his random attacks. Suddenly someone called Eunuch Hai. It was the fifth prince Ji Ruyuan. He asked Eunuch Hai if he have any idea what those two people's identities could be. Eunuch Hai greets him and said that he is useless and has no idea. He asked Fifth Prince and Bai Chuan what they think who were those people. Fifth Prince told Eunuch Hai that at that time he was standing too far. All he saw was everyone's auras getting tangled up. Bai Chuan said that it's been a long time since he went down the mountain. He have no idea what kind of experts there are in this world. But Bai Chuan angrily said that whoever it is, if he ever see him again, he will never let them get away. Eunuch Hai said to Fifth Prince that when that person saw Bai Chuan, he immediately looked for the prince and attacked him. It seems like he recognizes both of them. Why don't the two of them contemplate for a while and see if they can find any clues? Suddenly Bai Chuan remembers the sword which Zhao Jinyu had. He told Fifth Prince that he saw a similar sword hung on underclothes of that attacker. He've seen it before. It's the sword Duke Zhao's son uses. Eunuch Hai was surprised. He asked Bai Chuan if what he said is true. Fifth Prince told Eunuch Hai and Bai Chuan to wait a moment. 
He said that the sword might be the same, but it doesn't mean the person is also the same. He said he have already taken a look at Zhao Jinyu's aura. He's a normal person, and the black tortoise diagram is on Fifth Prince's hand. He will never get it wrong. Eunuch Hai said that, although Fifth Prince say that, since that attacker's sword came from the Zhao residence, it can only mean they got something to do with this incident. He better return and report it to the emperor. Fifth Prince said to Eunuch Hai Thay, The Zhao clan has a deep foundation. If they are scheming something, they gotta be careful. He told Eunuch Hai to don't make a big fuss before they find evidence. It will only make the commoner suffer unnecessarily. Eunuch Hai told Fifth Prince that he will convey his message to the emperor. He greets Fifth Prince and asks his permission to leave first. After Eunuch Hai left, both Ji Ruyuan and Bai Chuan also left. Someone was secretly listening to them. It was Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu was angry because he don't want to kill all of those people if possible. But if goes on like that, he will be left with no choice. Zhao Jinyu goes towards the house where Mu Luo Shui leave. Zhao Jinyu was wondering how his silly wife is doing. He was hopping she didn't get hurt, since she was the target. Zhao Jinyu knock on Mu Luo Shui's house door. Mu Luo Shui opens the door. Mu Luo Shui was surprised to see him. Zhao Jinyu asked her that he heard some loud noises just now. Is she okay? Does she want to go out? Zhao Jinyu was thinking that his silly wife used to be the empress in his previous life. There's no way she will sit still and do nothing after encountering an assassin. Zhao Jinyu can bet that she's making her personal maid help her prepare something. On the other hand, Mu Luo Shui was too nervous to see Zhao Jinyu. She wants to react like how an ordinary girl will react after encountering an assassin. Mu Luo Shui started crying like a child saying just now. A weird person broke in. She is too scared. Zhao Jinyu hugged her to calm down. Zhao Jinyu was relieved to see Mu Luo Shui safe, but he knows that. He also need to start moving soon, so that Mu Luo Shui won't get worried and do something behind Zhao Jinyu's back. Mu Luo Shui asked Zhao Jinyu to quickly get away from here. From behind Yuan Ji was surprised to see that. Mu Luo Shui switches her personality so naturally. After Zhao Jinyu left from Mu Luo Shui's house, he was thinking about what the next step should he take. But suddenly, Duke Zhao comes running towards Zhao Jinyu, asking him what happened. Duke Zhao asked Zhao Jinyu that he heard from Old Fu that a thief broke into their residence. Did Zhao Jinyu attack him? Zhao Jinyu told Duke that someone released ghosts in residence, so Zhao Jinyu had no choice but to intervene. Suddenly, Zhao Jinyu remembered about his elder sister. He asked Duke, Where's his elder sister? He said he haven't seen her for the entire day. Zhao Jinyu knows that, with her personality, there's no way she wouldn't have appeared. Was she the assassin's target? Duke Zhao told Zhao Jinyu that his elder sister is paying a visit to her subordinates who followed her back to the capital. Duke had gone just a while back to see her. He asked Zhao Jinyu, if something wrong here. Zhao Jinyu said no. There's nothing wrong. He asked Duke to don't tell his sister what happened in the residence. He don't want her to be needlessly worried. Duke said, all right. He asked Zhao Jinyu. Did he expose his real strength? Zhao Jinyu told Duke that back then, he was wearing a mask. However, someone definitely noticed the sword he was using belonged to the Zhao residence. Duke Zhao said, In that case, can't Zhao Jinyu just deal with them? Zhao Jinyu told Duke that, if only it were that easy, he would have done that. He told Duke that, the one who recognized his is Bai Chuan. Duke Zhao was shocked to hear that, but Zhao Jinyu told Duke that, since they don't have direct evidence, we can simply say the sword was stolen. Duke asked Zhao Jinyu if he think the emperor can be fooled so easily. If he wants to condemn someone, he won't worry about the pretext. Suddenly housekeeper comes running for Duke. He told Duke that Eunuch Li from the palace has arrived. Both Duke and Zhao Jinyu were shocked to hear that. They look at each other. Eunuch Li called Duke Zhao, young master Zhao, and told they that his majesty has issued a decree. Since the hidden summit peak will open soon, they are welcoming warriors from around the world for tomorrow's banquet. They would like to invite Duke Zhao and his son Zhao Jinyu to attend the banquet. On the other side, in Heavenly Pure Palace, Emperor was drinking tea. After he drinks it, he give it to Eunuch Hai and ask that Noble Consort Huang is Eunuch Hai's beloved daughter. Is he really willing to do it? Minister Huang greets Emperor and said that it's a blessing for his daughter to be useful to his majesty. Moreover, he won't feel reassured to leave it to others. Emperor smiled when he hear what Minister Huang said. He stand up from his seat and said that Minister Huang is so merciless. They'll do as he say. Emperor said he also want to see it at tomorrow's banquet. He wonder if Duke Zhao wants to save his debauchee son or that expert who could defeat an earth immortal. Minister Huang said, he can bet the situation will be quite entertaining during the banquet. On the other side, 
In Zhao Resident, both Duke and Zhao Jinyu were thinking about the invitation which Emperor gave them. Duke Zhao said to Zhao Jinyu that Emperor must have planned the banquet as some sort of trap. Zhao Jinyu said to Duke that since they don't have any direct evidence, they should attend it. If they don't participate, they will look suspicious. Zhao Jinyu thought that if something happens, he is confident enough to escape the palace together with Duke Zhao. Suddenly, Zhao Jinyu asked Duke if their clan still have any experts. Duke Zhao points his finger at himself, saying, Isn't there one expert right in front of Zhao Jinyu? Zhao Jinyu turned his face, showing that he don't expect much from Duke. Duke get angry at him. While going, Zhao Jinyu said to Duke that he will return first and think about how to deal with that idiot emperor. Duke gets angry, calling Zhao Jinyu bastard, asking him if he is not going to discuss it with his dad this time again. When Zhao Jinyu left, Duke thought, Why did Zhao Jinyu ask about the expert in their clan? Did Zhao Jinyu detect that person's presence? On the other side, Zhao Jinyu was thinking that his stinky dad is unwilling to tell him who might it be, even in his previous life. He didn't know the existence of such a person. If there's really an expert, usually it's someone who looks ordinary. Housekeeper Old Fu was walking from there, Zhao Jinyu thought. Could it be Old Fu? But suddenly Old Fu's tangled his foot and fall on the ground. When Zhao Jinyu saw it, he realized that he is overthinking it. Many years ago, Ji Ruyuan was teaching Ji Chang, who was the son of current emperor. All the questions that Ji Ruyuan asked Ji Chang, Ji Chang answered him without hesitation. Ji Ruyuan was happy to teach Ji Chang. He ended the class for that day. Ji Chang greets Ji Ruyuan and was about to leave, but Ji Ruyuan told him to wait, because he have a last question remaining. Ji Ruyuan asked Ji Chang that, there is no shortage of skilled imperial physicians in the palace. Why does Ji Chang insist on learning medicine from him? Ji Chang told Ji Ruyuan that, a maid who has been caring for him since he was a child died due to not receiving timely treatment. Ji Ruan was surprised when he heard that. Ji Ruan smiled at his answer. It appears to Ji Ruan that the Zhou dynasty will soon be welcoming a benevolent king. But he at the time didn't understand just what kind of place was the imperial palace. In present time, in the imperial palace, Eunuch Hai greets them. Eunuch Hai told Fifth Prince that His Majesty is already waiting at the Hall of Mental Cultivation. He asked Fifth Prince to please follow him. He also greets Bai Chuan and told him to please wait here. Bai Chuan asked him what is it. Eunuch Hai told Bai Chuan that the emperor only summoned the prince. So he told Bai Chuan to rest in the main hall. Bai Chuan asked Eunuch Hai if he mishear him that Ji Xingyi is ordering Bai Chuan. Eunuch Hai begged Bai Chuan to don't make it difficult for him. Bai Chuan was about to say something to Eunuch Hai, but Ji Ruyuan asked him to wait, telling him that he will be right back. Bai Chuan was not happy about it. Ji Ruyuan told him to don't worry. He said he know what he is doing. Because right now, he clearly understand what kind of place the imperial palace actually is. When Eunuch Hai and Fifth Prince were walking, Fifth Prince asked Eunuch Hai if the emperor alone in the Hall of Heart Cultivation. Eunuch Hai told Fifth Prince that His Majesty also summoned the princes and princesses there. Ji Ruyuan realized that the emperor apparently wants to borrow his eye to have a glimpse of the prince's and princess's future, just like back then. Ten years ago, emperor told Ji Chang that today is the day his fifth imperial uncle's eye disease fully healed. His fifth imperial uncle can be considered as his tutor, so he should let him look at what his future will look like. Ji Ruyuan removed the clothes from his eyes and looks at Ji Chang. Emperor, ask him how is it, Ji Ruyuan told emperor that. He see a golden dragon surrounding the body. It's the aura of a king. When emperor hear about aura of a king, he asked Ji Chang, What do we think? Ji Chang told emperor that, in his opinion, everything is possible. Even if he don't have the aura of a king, he can still achieve greatness. Emperor laughs loudly saying it's a excellent words. Everything is possible. Emperor stand up and while grabbing a sword, he told Ji Chang that, to commemorate today, he will present Ji Chang with a treasure sword. He told Ji Chang to be prepared to receive it. Ji Chang raised his hand to receive the sword. Emperor while unlizing the sword told Ji Chang that he also liked to tell him something, which is a person should bive their time. Ji Chang was surprised to hear that. At that moment, Emperor cut down Ji Chang's head with his sword. Ji Ruyuan was to shock to see that. Emperor called him and said that he accidentally splashed the blood everywhere. Can Ji Ruyuan lend him a cloth to wipe it off? After that incident, Fifth left the palace. Eunuch Hai notify the Emperor that the fifth prince has arrived. Ji Ruyuan was thinking, is the emperor going to repeat the tragedy from that year? Why can't he spare even his children? Ji Ruyuan knows that Ji Xinga, 
is unworthy to be a king. Unjust people must repent their karma. On the other side, Duke Zhao and Zhao Jinyu also entered the imperial palace. When fifth prince Ji Ruyuan entered the palace, he greets the emperor Ji Xinghe, emperor called Ji Ruyuan, imperial uncle, and told him that he don't have to be courteous. He asked Ji Ruyuan to quickly take a look among his children, which of them have potential. All the emperor's children were looking at Ji Ruyuan with hopes in their eyes, because they heard the imperial uncle can see through a person's aura. If they can give him a good impression, they will be able to be successful. Ji Ru Wan looks at the sword which Emperor used to kill Ji Chang, which was also there. They he looks at Emperor's children who want him to look at them so they can get approval from their father, Ji Xing He. But none of them were special. Ji Ru Wan thought that, this is good, he can just tell the truth. Ji Ru Wan told Emperor that, all princes and princesses have potential, but if they want to display remarkable aura, they still need to be cultivated. Emperor asked Ji Ru Yuan that, he understand what Ji Ru Yuan mean, but is he certain that none of his children are noteworthy? Ji Xingyi released his powerful aura, and said to Ji Ru Yuan, that he don't have to feel burdened. Ji Ru Yuan told Emperor that, he is ashamed, but everything he said is true. Emperor looks at him with a serious face. Then he laugh and thank Ji Ru Yuan for his hard work. He told his children that they are dismissed for today. But suddenly he noticed that, one of the prince, Hung Yi is not there. Emperor. Ask Eunuch Hai, what's happening? When Ji Ru Yuan hear the name Hung Yi, he thought, is it the second prince who is messing? Eunuch Hai told Emperor that, second prince, Hung Yi has diarrhea, he will be arriving later. Other prince and princess started talking that, Hung Yi as expected of him. If it's him, it will make no difference whether one check on him or not, there's no need to waste time on him. Emperor told Eunuch Hai to summon the imperial physician and Hung Yi here, and let the imperial physician take a look at him. Suddenly a voice comes that I'm here. It was second prince, Hung Yi. He arrived. But when he take a step, he tangled his leg and fall on the ground in front of Ji Ruan. Hung Yi stand up and said sorry, Ji Ruan. Because he accidentally fall in front of Ji Ruan, Ji Ruan offers his hand to Hung Yi to get up. All the other prince and princess started laughing at Hung Yi. Hung Yi was embarrassed. But at that time Ji Ruan noticed a small golden dragon in Hung Yi. Ji Ruan bite his lips when he saw it, while helping Hung Yi get up. Ji Ruan said to Emperor that, His Majesty doesn't have to summon the Imperial Physician. He can take a look at Hung Yi. Hung Yi grabbed Ji Ruan's hand and thanked his Imperial Uncle. Hung Yi was too scared. Ji Ruan slowly said in Hung Yi's ears that, If he want to survive, he better leave the capital as soon as possible. Hung Yi was surprised to hear that. Emperor asked Ji Ruan, How is Hung Yi? Ji Ruan told Emperor that Second Prince has a good heart and is harmless. Hung Yi was too embarrassed because other prince and princess were laughing at him saying that useless garbage will be harmless. Outside that room, Chun Yang Zi and Mu Jin was standing. They hear Emperor dismisses all of his children and telling his imperial uncle, Ji Ruyuan, to stay back. He want to introduce two people to him. Mu Jin started walking towards that room. Chun Yang Zi asked her that. He have previously revealed his identity. Will the emperor's summon be unfavorable to them? Mu Jin told Chun Yang Zi to don't worry. Because according to what Chun Yang Zi said, Chun Yang Zi forced a Zhao clan expert to reveal himself. She is sure the emperor is going to be grateful to him. Emperor asked both immortals to come in. Mu Jin told Chun Yang Zi to let's go. She will handle it. One, the other side. People were fighting over food. A servant was looking at them thinking that, this is just the first dish, and this pair of father and son is already fighting over it. The one who were fighting are Duke Zhao and Zhao Jinyu. They were fighting about who will eat the food. They even fist fight for it, but both of them were acting, Duke Zhao said to Zhao Jinyu, that they've already gone so far, yet there's no reaction, they want the reaction from Bai Chuan, but his was unshakable. Zhao Jinyu in a slow voice told Duke to stop the act, then he normal said to Duke that he'll give it to him, Duke throw his chopstick and shouted that he don't want it anymore, Duke in slow voice. Ask Zhao Jinyu. That is it really alright? The person who recognized Zhao Jinyu's northern wasteland sword is right across him. Why is there no reaction from him at all? It's making Duke restless. Zhao Jinyu told Duke to stop panicking. He thought that the people here are primarily rulers of vassal states and high officials, but there are no traces of ambush in the hall. There's also no reaction from Bai Chuan. That was really weird. But suddenly Zhao Jinyu noticed something. He saw that Bai Chuan is using drifting consciousness, but why and where's the fifth prince? 
Zhao Jinyu thought. Is Bai Chuan's consciousness protecting the fifth prince? But for what reason is the fifth prince in danger? Zhao Jinyu smiles thinking this imperial palace doesn't look so harmonious. On the other hand, when both Mu Jin and Chun Yangzi entered the palace, Emperor introduced them to Ji Ru Yuan as immortal from the Taiyi sect. Ji Ru Yuan was surprised to see them. Ji Ru Yuan was sweating a lot because back then he was still wondering, what if the Calamity's aura is faint and he can't find it? But when he looks at Mu Jin, he thinking it's a useless worry. Because right now, Ji Ru Yuan can feel the Calamity's aura all around him. Ji Ru Yuan thought that, this person will bring Calamity to the people if she's not killed. Ji Ru Yuan point his finger at Mu Jin and beg the emperor to kill this person immediately. Ji Ru Yuan told emperor that, this person's aura is the Mars Calamity. If they let her live, she will bring chaos to the world one day. Emperor looks at Mu Jin thinking is she really Mars Calamity. Mu Jin didn't get angry and said that today, His Majesty hosted a banquet in the palace. And yet, the prince is already drunk before the banquet even begins. Ji Ru Yuan grabbed the emperor's sword, and while unleashing the sword, he said, Prepare to die, you evil. Chun Yangzi get angry to hear that. He raised his sword and released his spiritual energy towards Ji Ru Yuan. Ji Ru Yuan could not even unleash his sword because of the pressure from Chun Yangzi's power. Ji Ru Yuan don't know what's happening. Why can't he move? Ji Ru Yuan called Bai Chuan. Bai Chuan disappeared in white fog. That white fog appeared behind Ji Ru Yuan. Ji Ru Yuan was reveled to see it. He called Bai Chuan and told him to kill Mu Jin. Bai Chuan appear behind Ji Ru Yuan and said he will do it. Chun Yangzi was surprised to see the fifth Juguo, Bai Chuan. Ji Ru Yuan told Bai Chuan that the aura of the person beside her is flourishing. His cultivation is most likely in the light immortal realm. He told Bai Chuan to be careful. Bai Chuan, while laughing, said he got it. Bai Chuan summons the spiritual blades in his hand and started attacking Chun Yangzi. Yunik Hai was blocking Bai Chuan's spiritual blades from reaching Emperor Ji Xinghei. Yunik Hai was surprised that Bai Chuan really attacked. Chun Yangzi make a barrier to defend himself and Mu Jin from Bai Chuan's attack. Bai Chuan told Chun Yangzi that there's a blind spot in his barrier. When Chun Yangzi looks behind himself, there was a Bai Chuan spiritual blade. It hit Chun Yangzi in heart, but Chun Yangzi's body turns into white fog. Bai Chuan was surprised to see it. Chun Yangzi appeared behind Bai Chuan and said that, he know about Bai Chuan, this is not the dwelling star mountain, and Bai Chuan's skill is not as good as rumored. He attacked Bai Chuan with his lightning spear. Bai Chuan immediately turned around and cover his hand with spiritual energy and shouted that his power is enough to deal with Chun Yangzi. When Chun Yangzi's lightning spear and Bai Chuan's spiritual blade collide with each other, there was a huge blast of spiritual energy. It felt like earthquake to the people of palace. When Duke Zhao felt the spiritual energy, he said that the experts are fighting against each other in the palace. Zhao Jinyu said to Duke that one of them must be Bai Chuan. Zhao Jinyu smiles and said, It's going to be fun if it's a fight between two Juguo. Chun Yangzi comes out of the fog. His clothes were torn. Bai Chuan was with Ji Ru Yuan. Ji Ru Yuan, ask him if he is okay. Bai Chuan said he is fine. Eunuch Hai, who was protecting the emperor, told emperor that both of the light immortals are holding back because of the people in the palace, but he still won't be able to hold for long. Eunuch Hai, ask emperor to make his decision as soon as possible. Emperor thought that. It wasn't easy for him to find such a good pawn. Should he give up just because of what Imperial Uncle said? But he knows that the Imperial Uncle would never lie about such things. Suddenly Mu Jin called Empress and said, She wonder if His Majesty has ever heard about Heavenly Marshal. Ji Xingyi asked her if she mean that Heavenly Marshal. Mu Jin said that's right. She told Emperor that Heavenly Marshal Relic is in the Hidden Immortal Summit. She said to Emperor that, If he want to learn more about it, how about they talk privately? When Emperor hear that he called Eunuch Hai and asked him to stop Bai Chuan's and Chun Yangzi's fight. On the other hand, Zhao Jinyu started acting like a drunken and shouting at servant asking why isn't the food here yet? Are they trying to starve him to death? Duke Zhao asks servants to bring more liquor for him. A servant looks at them and thought, Is that pair of father and son treating the imperial palace as a restaurant? Duke Zhao in slowly voice said to Zhao Jinyu that this should be enough to get away by pretending to be drunk before the banquet begins. Zhao Jinyu laughs and said, Okay, just like how they usually do. Zhao Jinyu told Duke that, It's Duke's turn to cause a scene this time. Duke smiled and said to Zhao Jinyu, That it should be Zhao Jinyu's turn. When both of them can't get to agreement, they started fighting for it with each other. Servants were very troubled. 
Thinking, can he just find someone to bring those two back? Suddenly another servant comes, M told other something. Then the other servant called Zhao Jinyu and told him that His Majesty sent Zhao Jinyu a message asking him to meet with Imperial Consort Huang, because Imperial Consort Huang wanted to give the princess some jewels as dowry. Zhao Jinyu was surprised when he hears that Emperors is asking him to go and meet Huang Yurong. Zhao Jinyu asked that servant, why would she come looking for him to give the princess her dowry? Servant told Zhao Jinyu that he also have no idea about that. Zhao Jinyu thought that there must be some kind of scheme in here. He can't really defy the order either. But Huan Yurong is his pawn. Is that idiot emperor trying to use Zhao Jinyu's pawn to deal with him? Then it's very interesting. While leaving Zhao Jinyu told Duke that he'll be right back. When Zhao Jinyu was going to Imperial Consort Huang's room, he noticed someone there. It was Second Prince Hung Yi, Zhao Jinyu play with Hung Yi. When they were younger, Zhao Jinyu thought isn't that the new emperor crowned by the vassals after Muluo Shui was dethroned, he started going towards Hung Yi. On the other hand, Hung Yi was worried thinking what should he do now. Back that year, his imperial brother never returned from the Hall of Heart Cultivation after going in. He don't know what happened that year, but he can't stay in this palace anymore. While Hung Yi was lost in his thoughts, Zhao Jinyu suddenly appeared in front of him. Hung Yi was too surprised by it, but when Hung Yi saw Zhao Jinyu, his face turned yellow. While hesitating, Hung Yi called Zhao Jinyu brother. Saying long time no see, Hung Yi started running away from Zhao Jinyu. Hung Yi thought that he is damn unlucky. Why must he come across this evil demon king now? Zhao Jinyu also started chasing after Hung Yi, asking him that, is this the reaction Hung Yi is supposed to have when seeing his childhood friend while running? Hung Yi told Zhao Jinyu that he just suddenly remembered something important. Zhao Jinyu called Hung Yi brat, telling him stop right there. Hung Yi said, there's no way he will stop because he knows that Zhao Jinyu is going to pick on him again. Zhao Jinyu said, he promised not to pick on Hung Yi too hard. Hung Yi while crying shouted no to Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu bring out his bell and called Blue Sparrow to block Hung Yi. Blue Sparrow appeared and then goes in front of Hung Yi. She turned into her human form and shouted, The greatest warrior under the high priest is here. Hung Yi was surprised to see her, he told Blue Sparrow, to please step aside, and both of them hit each other. Hung Yi was surprised thinking where did that little girl come from? Zhao Jinyu put his hand on Hung Yi's shoulder and asked him, Why don't he continue to run? Hung Yi was too scared to see Zhao Jinyu. Blue Sparrow also flew away and was unconscious on a tree. Hung Yi asked Zhao Jinyu to wait a minute. He said he just now seemed to have slammed into a little girl. Zhao Jinyu asked him, What little girl is he still half asleep? Zhao Jinyu angrily grabbed Hung Yi's clothes and asked him to tell Zhao Jinyu the truth. Did he run away when he saw Zhao Jinyu because he did something against Zhao Jinyu? Hung Yi said he didn't do anything. Zhao Jinyu asked him, Then why did he run? Hung Yi thought about what his uncle Ji Ruyuan told him. But he could not tell that to Zhao Jinyu. He said it's nothing. Zhao Jinyu thought that, this brat is definitely hiding something, but he have to go meet with Huang Yurong now. Zhao Jinyu got an idea when he see Blue Sparrow previously, when Zhao Jinyu wanted to go out but had to pretend he was in the house, he will make Blue Sparrow use the unmanifest poisonous insect to change into himself. Zhao Jinyu touched Blue Sparrow and in slow voice told her to wake up and use her unmanifest poisonous insect. Zhao Jinyu point at Hung Yi's back with a shocked face. When Hung Yi looks at to see what is behind him, at that moment Blue Sparrow turns into Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu told Blue Sparrow to help him keep an eye on Hung Yi for a moment. He'll be right back. Zhao Jinyu goes from there. Hung Yi said there's nothing. When Hung Yi asked him what was there, Blue Sparrow who is now Zhao Jinyu, asked him while smiling. If have he eaten, Hung Yi was too scared thinking what is Zhao Jinyu is plotting this time. Original Zhao Jinyu returned to that servant who was escorting him to Imperial Consort Huang's room. When Zhao Jinyu get there, there's no killing intention or sign of ambush. So he thought it should be fine. When Zhao Jinyu entered Imperial Consort Huang's room, there was some kind of smoke there. When Zhao Jinyu inhaled that smoke, Zhao Jinyu got hypnotized. Imperial Consort Huang was there, she called Zhao Jinyu darling. On the other hand, Mu Luo Shui was treating Minister Huang's son's madness. When Mu Luo Shui injected her spiritual energy into his head, a poisonous insect comes out of his nose. Mu Luo Shui killed that insect. Mu Luo Shui told Minister Huang that the poisonous insect inside his body has been removed. And as for his daughter's natal poisonous insect, they'll deal with it after coming back from the hidden immortal summit. Minister Huang thanked Mu Luo Shui for her rescue. Minister Huang was surprised to see that 
Mu Luo Shui can truly remove the poisonous insect. He thought that if it's like that, then the previously stated conditions are most likely not something she blurted out without thinking. Minister Huang said to Mu Luo Shui that the third princess is smart, talented, and skillful. It's such a waste for her to marry Zhao Jinyu, but she don't have to worry about it now. Mu Luo Shui asked him what do we mean? Minister Huang told Mu Luo Shui that the emperor hopes to get rid of Zhao Jinyu as soon as possible. So Minister Huang proposed a plan to charge him with a crime. He think there will be a result by today. Mu Luo Shui asked him what method is he going to employ. He won't be able to deal with Zhao Jinyu by charging him with an ordinary crime. Minister Huang asked her that. Don't she think the crime of committing adultery with an imperial consort is enough? Mu Luo Shui was very angry, but she controlled herself. She said to Minister Huang that he even sacrificed Huang Yurong. Minister Huang smiles and said, Everything is for the emperor. He also have no other choice. Mu Luo Shui asked him if she should say as expected of Minister Huang. Minister Huang said, You flatter me. When Mu Luo Shui comes out of Huang's resident, Minister Huang asked her that he'll send her out. Mu Luo Shui told him that the matter has been dealt with. She told him, Don't forget what he promised her, and there's no need. See her out. When Mu Luo Shui was walking, she was thinking that, according to the time, her idiot husband should already be with Huang Yurong by now. Mu Luo Shui started running in hurry. Mu Luo Shui was praying to God to don't let anything happen to Zhao Jin Yu. Minister Huang looks at Mu Luo Shui running through window and smiles at her. In the imperial consort Huang's room, she goes near Zhao Jin Yu and told him why don't they rest early. Suddenly Zhao Jin Yu's true vital circulation works. Spiritual energy started running in Zhao Jin Yu's body through his heart. Zhao Jin Yu regained his consciousness again. He was surprised to see the effect of such a domineering drug. He pushed Imperial Consort Huang away, saying he is married. He put spiritual energy in his hand and put it on her head. She asked him how did he regain, but she fall asleep right away there. Zhao Jin Yu cursed the emperor, saying, That idiot emperor, he even dared to use such a venomous scheme. Suddenly a loud voice comes telling soldiers to obey the order and surround the scene. Zhao Jinyu realized that the support services has arrived. Soldier commander told other to don't even let a fly pass through. A maid was there. She while crying said that the imperial consort is in danger. Please go in there quickly. All the soldiers went inside thinking that some scum went in, and they'll capture that perverted scum. That maid remain outside. When everyone goes inside that maid stopped crying and turned back to his original form. She was Zhao Jinyu. He thanked God that he have the unmanifested poisonous insect with him. Zhao Jinyu was worried thinking what should he do now. But then he remembered that didn't he leave an alibi earlier. On the other hand, Blue Sparrow was talking with Hung Yi. But she is not good with people. She was hopping. Zhao Jinyu will come back quickly because she can't hold on anymore. Suddenly she hear a voice in her head. It was Zhao Jinyu. He told her that he is back. And told her to think up an excuse to get away. Then they'll switch back. Blue Sparrow told Hung Yi that he need to go to the toilet. He will leave first. Hung Yi was thinking why did he come here for? Hung Yi finally relaxed thinking this jinx is finally gone. Suddenly real Zhao Jinyu put his hand on Hung Yi's shoulder asking him who is he calling a jinx. Hung Yi was too shocked to hear that. Hung Yi's was about to cry. He asked Zhao Jinyu. That didn't he go to the toilet? Zhao Jinyu said. Can he be fast? Zhao Jinyu put his hand on Hung Yi's shoulder and told him that to celebrate their reunion. They should play together since it's been a while. Zhao Jinyu smiled like a devil. Hung Yi was too scared to see him. Zhao Jin Yu started dragging Hung Yi with him thinking that he now have an alibi, but it needs to be fortified. He must give other people the impression that he've been together with Hung Yi all this time. Zhao Jin Yu first throwing stone at fish. Servant comes running to stop him, then he started flirting around with maids. Zhao Jin Yu was running around all the palace with Hung Yi. Zhao Jin Yu and Hung Yi finally stop at one place. Many soldiers comes running towards them, telling them to stop right there. Hung Yi was thinking that he didn't do anything wrong. Please don't involve him in it. Zhao Jinyu suddenly grabbed Hung Yi's clothes again and started dragging him. He told Hung Yi, don't rush. There's still a lot more fun to do. Hung Yi started crying, asking him to spare him. Soldier were chasing after them. One day ago, Zhao Jinyu was preparing to go to Imperial Palace. He knows that the amount of information one has with them is the key to winning while gambling. He knows that Zhao Clan and Tian Clan's delicate balance. Ji Xinghe will definitely sense an impending danger. The moment he learns that the Zhao clan is hiding an expert. So Zhao Jinyu tried to calculate the cards both sides have. Blue Sparrow was looking at him working. After some time Blue Sparrow fall asleep on Zhao Jinyu's lap. When Zhao Jinyu realized that it's already morning, 
He thought that today he have to attend a banquet at the palace. What kind of scheme that idiot emperor is hatching? When Zhao Jinyu left his room, he was surprised to see Mu Luoxu in front of his room. When Zhao Jinyu asked her why did she come here, Mu Luoxu told him that she wanted to have breakfast with Zhao Jinyu, but she couldn't find him. She asked him if he going out somewhere. Zhao Jinyu told her that today, he's have to attend a banquet at the palace. He reasoned that he might as well leave his stomach empty and feast on the food there. Mu Luoxu was surprised to her that Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luoxu that he'll go wash his face first. He asked her to wait for him to come back. Suddenly Mu Luoxu called Zhao Jinyu. Husband, Zhao Jinyu's was surprised and embarrassed at the same time. Mu Luoxu touched Zhao Jinyu's chicks and told him to please don't force him herself. No matter what problem he come across, always remember she is here for him. Mu Luoxu asked Zhao Jinyu to believe in her. Zhao Jinyu was blushing. He hold Mu Luoxu's hand and said he'll be depending his wife. Mu Luoxu was thinking about it while running towards Imperial Palace. She miscalculated. She didn't thinking that Ji Xinke was so quick to learn about the hidden expert hiding in the Zhao clan, and even conspired with Huang Yu to carry out this evil scheme. Some soldiers try to stop her from entering the palace asking her about her identity. Mu Luoxu throw an identity token at them telling them to scram. Those soldiers were surprised to see the Tian clan's token. Mu Luoxu was hoping that her dummy husband don't fall for it. In a turn road, Mu Luoxu stop because see Zhao Jinyu coming her way. Zhao Jinyu and Mu Luoxu were surprised to see each other. Zhao Jinyu asked Mu Luoxu why is she here in the palace. Mu Luoxu hugged Zhao Jinyu tightly. Heng Yi also comes running from Zhao Jinyu's back. Mu Luoxu confused thinking why is Heng Yi is here with Zhao Jinyu. Suddenly many soldiers comes running towards them, asking Zhao Jinyu to stop right now. They ask who gave Zhao Jinyu permission to be so brazen within the palace. Mu Luoxu was surprised. See them arrive so quickly, Mu Luoxu thought as expected of Ji Xingyi. He's well prepared. She thought that now the things have progressed this far. She can't hide it any longer. Mu Luoxu told soldiers to stop. She said she is the third imperial princess of the Zhou dynasty. Order all of them to stop. Both Heng Yi and Zhao Jinyu was surprised to see Mu Luoxu not acting like an idiot. Zhao Jinyu grabbed Mu Luoxu's hand to run away. He thought, is she silly? Why is she abandoning her character? While running, Zhao Jinyu told Mu Luoxu that he'll bring her out. When Mu Luoxu looks at Zhao Jinyu's back, she remember for past life when Zhao Jinyu did the same thing. Mu Luoxu smiles thinking, her husband is dummy. Even though he have never learned martial arts in this life, he is trying to protect her instead of himself. On the other hand, in the Imperial Palace when Emperor told Eunuch Hai to stop Chun Yangzi's and Bai Chuan fight, Eunuch Hai jumped between them to stop. He make a barrier around himself to stop them. When Chun Yangzi and Bai Chuan saw him, both of them try to control their power. Even that was too much for Eunuch Hai. He was bleeding with his mouth. Chun Yangzi asked him why is he stopping them. What's the meaning of this? Emperor, ask his imperial uncle to please calm down. Emperor told Eunuch Hai to bring the two immortal Taoists and return first. He want to have a conversation with his imperial uncle. Eunuch Hai who was injured, said yes, your majesty and he returns with Chun Yangzi and Mu Jin. Ji Ruyuan told Emperor that, if they don't kill that witch there will be a disaster. He asked Emperor if he not believe him. Emperor said of course, he believed Ji Ruyuan. But what if Emperor say, he want to spare her. Emperor was thinking about what Mu Jin told him. When Emperor was lost in his thoughts, Ji Ruyuan asked Emperor to please reconsider his decision. Ji Ruyuan said to Emperor that, the world would be in chaos if that person is allowed to live. They must kill her. Emperor asked Ji Ruyuan if he ever heard of Heavenly Marshal. When Ji Ruyuan hear about Heavenly Marshal, he asked Emperor if mean the dynasty of Heavenly Marshal. Emperor said that's right. The dynasty of Heavenly Marshal that once unified the whole mainland. The unparalleled great emperor of Heavenly Marshal. He gathered capable people and called upon the spiritual beasts to unite the land. But unfortunately because of an unknown reason, the dynasty of Heavenly Marshal was annihilated entirely. Today, not a trace of it can be found. Ji Ruiwan asked the emperor that wasn't all of those just a legend. Emperor said not really. Emperor told Ji Ruiwan that he married concubine Mu because of her ancestral spring clan identity. The ancestral spring clan is the survivor of the Heavenly Marshal. Concubine Mu has provided him with proof of the existence of Heavenly Marshal. It's just that he've spent years searching for it, but never found any traces of the Heavenly Marshal relic. However, now that he think about it, there's a possibility that the Heavenly Marshal relic is hidden within the hidden immortal summit. Ji Ruyuan told Emperor to hold on. He asked Emperor if that witch tell him about this information. He told Emperor that, that person is the Mars Calamity. 
How can he believe what she says? He asks Emperor if he thinks Ji Ruyuan is talking nonsense. Emperor looks at Ji Ruyuan with a serious face. He stand up and told his imperial uncle to don't worry. He said he believe in everything Ji Ruyuan say. However, he want to know, do he have to follow everything he say? Emperor walk past, Ji Ruyuan. Ji Ruyuan was nervous, he said he don't dare. Emperor said then, he have something he need Ji Ruyuan assistance with. He told Ji Ruyuan that, during the trip to the Hidden Immortal Summit, Ji Ruyuan will be in charge of leading Emperor's troop. On the other hand, when Eunuch Hai take his leave, Chun Yangzi ask Mu Jin that, that Eunuch is gone, should they run away first? What if the Emperor changes his mind and decides to encircle them? Mu Jin told him that, there is no need. Ji Xing He won't do that. Chun Yangzi asked her how can she be so sure. Mu Jin said she told Emperor the Heavenly Martial Relic is hidden in the Hidden Immortal Summit. She said those who know about the legend of Heavenly Martial will know that there's a Heavenly Book in the Dynasty of the Heavenly Martial. That book recorded the secret way how Heavenly Martial united the whole mainland. So there's no way Ji Xing He won't be interested in it. However, Ji Xing He's reaction was a bit off. Chun Yangzi asked her what does she mean, Mu Jin said. Since they hid the information from him, it could be considered lying to the Emperor. She asked Chun Yangzi that don't he think Emperor accepted it a little too casually on the other side. Ji Ruiwan asked Emperor why is he taking the lead, Emperor said. Because he trusts Ji Ruiwan, Emperor said he know the intentions of those two are not that simple, but he need them to guide him during the Hidden Immortal Summit. However, once he've gotten what he want, Ji Ruiwan can help him to get rid of them. Ji Ruiwan said to Emperor that there will be a large crowd at that time. Wouldn't the Zhou dynasty become the Tai sect's enemy if someone decided to snitch on them? Emperor told Ji Ruyuan to rest assured, because only Ji Ruyuan and Emperor troops will be returning from the hidden Immortal Summit. Ji Ruyuan was surprised to hear that. Emperor said he've got another deal with those two. They promised to help him with removing the vassal state. He is sure they will be tired after killing all those people. And when the time comes by having Bai Chuan and the troops attack them, Ji Ruyuan will undoubtedly be able to get rid of them. Ji Ruyuan said to Emperor that, excluding their troops, there will be millions of people there. Are they going to kill all of them? Emperor asked Ji Ruyuan to don't be too greedy because he have already permitted his request to kill the Calamity. At the same time outside the Imperial Palace, soldiers were chasing after Zhao Jinyu, Mu Luoxue, and Heng Yi. While running with Zhao Jinyu, Heng Yi said he didn't do anything wrong. Why do we need to run too? Zhao Jinyu told Heng Yi to shut up and just keep running. He Heng Yi was about to collapse. He said he don't want to run anymore. He can't even run anymore. Many soldiers surrounded them from front. He Heng Yi said to Zhao Jinyu that they're done for. There are watchmen in the front too. Zhao Jinyu told Heng Yi that they are not watchmen. They are the Imperial Guard. Those guards surrounded Zhao Jinyu. Heng Yi said it's not that serious enough to deploy the Imperial Guard. Suddenly someone shouted Zhao Jinyu's name. It was Emperor Ji Xinge. He told soldiers to take him down. Both Mu Luoxu and Heng Yi were surprised to see Emperor. Soldiers grabbed Zhao Jinyu. He said to Emperor that all he did was fry some fish. There was no need to go that far. Those soldiers forced Zhao Jinyu on knees. Zhao Jinyu again said to Emperor that he just pulled some pranks. Is there a need to make such a big fuss? Emperor looks at Zhao Jinyu angrily. He told guards to imprison Zhao Jinyu in the Imperial Clan Court. Soldiers were going towards Zhao Jinyu. But suddenly someone shouted at them, telling them, Ro, hold on. It was Duke Zhao. He asked Emperor to hold on. He said he have something to say. Duke said to Emperor that, no matter how much his son messed around, isn't this a little too much? He said he is sure there's some kind of misunderstanding. Emperor said to Duke that, if all this is a misunderstanding, he will act fair and free him. But if it's not, then the Zhao clan will have a second Zhao Wuji. Duke Zhao was to shock to her that soldiers started dragging Zhao Jinyu away. Zhao Jinyu thought, it's bad. He wasn't able to tell his dad that he left a backup. Zhao Jinyu looks at his dad and thought that, this is not the first time that idiot emperor has tried to set Zhao Jinyu up. It should be fine. But suddenly Zhao Jinyu noticed something Zhao Jinyu didn't understand. Although he caused trouble and was imprisoned in the past, but why this time Duke Zhao almost failed to hold back his killing intent? Zhao Jinyu was praying that his old man don't do something reckless. At the Zhao residence when Duke Zhao got home, housekeeper asked him why did he return so early. Duke didn't reply to him. It's been a while since housekeeper saw the Duke Zhao looking so gloomy. Duke opens a room's door. He remove a painting from the wall. There was hidden switch behind that painting. Duke press on that switch. A hidden passageway appear in front of him. Duke go down there, Duke shouted. Old ghost, are you dead? A voice come in Duke's reply, asking him why is he being so noisy for? Did Zhao Wuji finally make a decision? On the other hand, 
at the palace emperor was surprised to get the report. He asked that soldier what did he said. That soldier told emperor that when he get to imperial consort Huang's room, at that time, he really didn't see Duke Zhao's son. Emperor called Heng Yi and asked him if he was really with Zhao Jinyu at that time. Heng Yi told Emperor that they were together for at least two hours. Emperor looks at Imperial Consort Huang's and thought, Why did Consort Huang light the drug? If she didn't see Zhao Jinyu, did she mess up? Suddenly, Consort Huang wakes up. Emperor asks her if she sees Zhao Jinyu. Consort Huang said she thinks she did, but the drug was too strong, so she immediately lost consciousness. She said sorry to Emperor. Emperor told her that he is not blaming her. He told Minister Huang Yu to stay back, and he told others to go out together with Eunuch Hai. Minister Huang said to Emperor that he thinks Zhao Jinyu should have arrived here. However, he might have used some kind of plan and taken advantage of the crisis. Emperor angrily. Ask Minister Huang that what kind of plan can that debauchee even make? Minister Huang told Emperor that it might not have been planned by Zhao Jinyu. The plan might have been made by the expert behind the Zhao clan. Emperor asked Minister Huang that, isn't he pretty good at deduction? He asked Minister Huang, how should they deal with Zhao Jinyu now? Minister Huang told Emperor to please don't rush, because Zhao clan still doesn't know that Emperor have no evidence. He smiled and said that, they can imprison Zhao Jinyu for a while, and plan a trap on top of another. On the other side, Mu Luoshu was hiding behind a block looking at Imperial clan court. Some guards were guarding it. Zhao Jinyu wants to get in there when she was about to attack. Suddenly she felt someone's presence standing behind herself. Mu Su quickly turned around to check who is it. It was Eunuch Hai. He greets Mu Su and asks her if she is trying to help Zhao Jinyu break out. Zhao Jinyu was not in mood talk to him. She asked him, does it matter to him? Eunuch Hai told her that, there are a lot of experts within the palace, and three armies are waiting for orders. Is she sure she is going to do this? Mu Su said she have already arranged everything. Eunuch Hai don't need not worry. Eunuch Hai realized that Muluaksu is really fell in love with Zhao Jinyu. Eunuch Hai told Muluaksu that she don't have to do anything because Zhao Jinyu will be freed after a while. If she try to break him out, she will be charged with the crime of breaking him out instead. Muluaksu asked him what do we mean. Eunuch Hai told Muluaksu that the imperial court is currently lacking evidence. His majesty captured Zhao Jinyu not because he wanted to kill him. That's all he can tell her right now. And Muluaksu told Eunuch Hai to hold on. She asked him if he is also involved in this trap. Eunuch Hai said, he is sure she understand his stance. He got serious and told Mu Luoxu that, if anything he have said to her is a lie, he'll die a million deaths. Mu Luoxu said fine she would not attack, but she want to meet with Zhao Jinyu at least once. Can he bring her in? While going Eunuch Hai told Mu Luoxu that, Emperor has ordered them to watch Zhao Jinyu strictly. There's no exception, but he happened to be summoning the guards at the Imperial Clan Court to tell them about the matter regarding imprisonment. He won't know anything if there's anyone who sneaked in during this time. Inside the prison, Zhao Jinyu was lying down on the other. A soldier comes and told other that Eunuch Hai has something to tell them. Come quickly. Zhao Jinyu told them don't forget to bring him some delicious food on their way back. At that moment, Mu Luoxu sneak inside the prison. Zhao Jinyu thought it's a guard. He asked him why did he come back so quickly. But to his surprise, the one who is in front of his prison cell is Mu Luoxu. Mu Luoxu asked him did he sleep well. Zhao Jinyu. Ask her why did he come here. He was worried about her. He asked her did they force her to do something. Mu Luoxu told him they didn't. Zhao Jinyu asked her then, why will they let her come in? Mu Luoxu lied to Zhao Jinyu telling him that. Emperor said their wedding will be postponed, so they let her come in to meet him. Zhao Jinyu said it will most likely get delayed. He said sorry to her. Mu Luoxu asked him why do he apologizing. She said that if she is the one being imprisoned, Zhao Jinyu also wouldn't mind right. Both of them looks the same when in their previous life Mu Luoxue was imprisoned and Zhao Jinyu comes to save her. Mu Luoxue looks the same ask. Zhao Jinyu is looks this time. Zhao Jinyu smiles and asks her if she's sure. Mu Luoxue smile and said, yep, she is sure. Inside the Zhao clan, the hidden expert said to Duke that he have gotten old. He asked Duke why Zhao Wuji didn't come with him. Duke told that man that Zhao Wuji is dead. That man was shocked to hear that. Duke said that year, they almost achieved victory in the battle against the Millennium Demon Kingdom. However, Ji Singhe suddenly sent out 12 golden plates and asked Zhao clan to withdraw. Wuji was unwilling to fall short, so he refused to return. Therefore, Duke led a regiment of the army and returned first. But Duke never imagined Ji Singhe would be so determined that Wuji is going to rebel. 
Ji Xinghe convinced the third Zhu Guo and sent the Zhu Guo to kill Zhao Wuji. On his way back, Du Jie encountered Qing Pingzi, who received the information. He told Duke that Emperor is going to kill Wuji. Duke finally reached his destination after sacrificing the two horses that died from fatigue, when both of them arrived at the battlefield. They were shocked to see Zhao Wuji was heavily injured. He was too exhausted, but he was still fighting the Zhugo's dog. Duke Zhao called Wuji, telling him to hold on. They are coming. When Wuji looks at them, he shouted and told them to look out behind him. Duke turns around and called Qing Pingzi, but to Duke's surprise, Qing Pingzi was attacked by a chain spear from behind. That chain tied Qing Pingzi's neck and attacked Duke. Duke was injured in the chest. Then his neck was also got tied by that chain. Third Zhu Guo was the one who attacked them. He told Duke that he cannot let Duke go there, because Duke's son is having a sacred battle with his children. As adults, they shouldn't disturb them. Duke was trying to untie himself. Duke said to him that his son didn't rebel, please spare him. Zhu Guo said to Duke that, of course he know Duke's son didn't rebel. Qing Pingzi asked him that why is he attacking Duke's son. Zhu Guo told Duke to look. Duke's son has only recently stepped into the Dan realm. Yet, he can go head to head with both of Zhu Guo's children, who are half-step into the light immortal realm. He's so outstanding that others can't help but want to destroy him. Zhu Guo told Duke that as for both of them, they are merely mediocre at best, so they should just stay down there. Duke started losing consciousness. He told Zhu Guo to hold on. He asked him to come back here, but he lost consciousness. When Duke woke up, Wu Ji had already stopped breathing. All he can do is bring back the heavily injured King Pingzi to the camp. At that time, Duke's wife had just given birth to his youngest son and was weak. After learning the news, she became depressed and left the world soon after. That expert was surprised to hear that even his junior sister Bai Lian is dead. That expert was very angry. He raised his hand, asking Duke if he is Duke here to receive death. That expert is the immortal. He grabbed Duke's neck and asked Duke that before he went into seclusion, he told Duke to take good care of them. And this is how Duke did it. Duke asked him to wait. That man said to Duke that Duke can make all the excuses he want when he meet his wife Bai Lian in heaven. Duke said to that expert that he can't die yet. His youngest son, Zhao Jinyu, if going to be killed by Ji Xinghe. When that expert hear that he released Duke Zhao, that expert asked Duke that, his youngest son, how is his strength compared to Wuji? Duke told him that he's stronger than Wuji. That expert told Duke that, in that case, he'll go with Duke. All the things he is protecting gotta have a place to settle. He asked Duke that, there's a lot of prohibition in the Imperial Palace, and there are many Zhuguo, assuming they succeed after Ji Xinghe is dead. The vassal state and the Millennium Demon Kingdom will surely start attacking. Have Duke Zhao thought this through? Duke said to that expert that, back in that year, he was holding back because his youngest son and daughter were still young. But right now, if he is going to lose another child, what good will peace do? That expert told Duke to let's go kill the emperor and turn the world upside down. When that expert take a step, he told Duke to hold on, that expect that earlier, he thought it was Zhao Wuji's step. It seems like it was Duke's youngest son. That expert called Duke dumbass. He asked Duke that can't he conduct a thorough investigation before taking action. He told Duke that his youngest son has already returned. Duke was surprised to hear that. He said Zhao Jinyu should be in prison right now. That expect said to Duke that, since that youngest son of Duke is stronger than Wuji, let's bring him together to kill Ji Xingyi. Duke asked that expert to wait a second. Let him go and take a look first. Duke told that expert that he never told Zhao Jinyu about Wuji's matter before. He asked that expert to don't tell Zhao Jinyu anything when the two of them meet. He don't want him to carry too much burden. That expert told Duke to scram before he change his mind and decide to kill Duke Zhao when Zhao Jinyu arrived at Zhao resident. He thought that he have reassured his wife. Still, he better not show himself around her during this period and regarding dad's side. He goes to Duke's room door and asks if the old man inside. Duke suddenly opened the door asking Zhao Jinyu how did he come back. But Duke crushed Zhao Jinyu by door. Duke didn't see Zhao Jinyu there. Zhao Jinyu comes behind the door. Du Jie asked him how did he come back. Weren't he locked inside the Imperial Clan Court? Zhao Jinyu told Duke that he happened to find a master of disguise who was willing to stay in prison in Zhao Jinyu's stead. He was talking about Blue Sparrow. Duke asked Zhao Jinyu if he is making that person his scapegoat. Zhao Jinyu said no. He told Duke that the Imperial Court lacks evidence, so they cannot convict Zhao Jinyu. Before he went with them, he already knew there was some kind of trap. So, he is been cautious. Duke asked him that. Why did he rush to come out then? What if they saw through the double? Zhao Jinyu told Duke to rest assured. 
That disguise is even more genuine than the original. Zhao Jinyu told Duke that the Hidden Immortal Summit is opening tomorrow. Sister still has to guard the border. They'll need someone to lead the Zhao clan's army during the trip to the Hidden Immortal Summit. Duke asks Zhao Jinyu if he ain't really going to involve himself in this mess. Zhao Jinyu smiles and told Duke to let's put that aside for now. He asked Duke if he wanted to discuss Ji Xinghei and that old yellow fish. Duke asks Zhao Jinyu to elaborate what do we mean. Zhao Jinyu smiles like a devil on that question. Next day, Duke Zhao goes to Imperial Palace and started hitting the drum of complaints. Everyone started gathering around him. Minister Huang comes running there asking Duke Zhao, What is he doing bringing the drum of complaints here? Duke said to Minister Huang that he is hitting the drum to complain for his bitterness. Minister Huang smiled and asked Duke if Duke is saying that the emperor is unjust and wrong that debauchee son of his. Duke said yes, it was too unfair. Duke shouted that he is feeling wronged for their Zhou Dynasty's emperor. Minister Huang was surprised to hear that. Duke pointed at himself and said, This old man failed to uphold the duty of a parent, allowing that ungrateful son to commit such an improper act. Duke shouted like a lunatic that every time it crosses Duke's mind, it becomes too uneasy for him to eat and sleep. That is why he is going to punish his own family today to uphold justice. As long as the emperor shows us the evidence, Duke will go there and immediately stab that ungrateful son of his. Other people started cheering for Duke. Duke smiled and asked Minister Huang to please allow him to show his loyalty. Duke asked Minister Huang to show him the evidence. Minister Huang was too surprised that he cannot everyone say anything. Zhao Rushuang was listening to their conversation for a side. Zhao Rushuang was thinking, did Duke really woke her up this early in the morning just to do this? Although Duke told Zhao Rushuang that the imperial court doesn't have evidence, she still wondered how her brother is doing in prison. She thought about sneaking into the prison to meet him. Suddenly, Zhao Rushuang some princes coming towards her. She thought, Does she have to rely on these people's help? She goes to a prince and hugged him. She asked that prince that it's been so long since they last met. Did he miss her? That prince was surprised and scared to Zhao Rushuang. Other prince run away from there saying they have some urgent matters to attend to. Zhao Rushuang asked them to wait. It's not like she'll eat them. Prince said sorry to her because he only think of her as a good brother. Zhao Rushuang proudly thought that the impression she left on the princes when Duke insisted on forcing her to go matchmaking is still with them. But she thought that she still have to find someone to help her sneak in and meet her brother. At the same time, Heng Yi was also coming towards her. He was looking at the ground. Thinking about something, Zhao Rushuang was thinking about that she have to escape from the palace quickly. And suddenly, Heng Yi Collins with her. Zhao Rushuang grabbed Heng Yi's collar, asking him who is he, not looking at the road when walking. Heng Yi was too scared he said sorry to Zhao Rushuang, but she immediately released him when she realized that Heng Yi is a prince. When Heng Yi saw her, he recognized her as the Zhao Jinyu's elder sister that has been guarding the border. Zhao Rushuang asked Heng Yi if he has free time. Why don't they go sightseeing? Heng Yi, while blushing, asked her where should they go. Zhao Rushuang pinched Heng Yi and told him that what she mean is to get close to each other. Heng Yi again with a cute face. Ask Zhao Rushuang that if she don't mind, he can get close to her. Zhao Rushuang started blushing after seeing Heng Yi's cute way of talking. Told Heng Yi that what she mean is to go on a date. If Heng Yi want to follow her, he will have to go to the border with her. Heng Yi will get exposed to the wind and sun every day. It's going to be harsh. Heng Yi hold Zhao Rushuang's hand and ask her to please bring him to the border with her. Zhao Rushuang got too embarrassed. He runs away from there telling Heng Yi that to let her think about it. Zhao Rushuang was too embarrassed thinking why is there someone like Heng Yi in the palace. She completely forgot about meeting her brother. The next day was the opening day of Hidden Immortal Summit. Zhao clan soldiers were marching. They shouted to step aside and make way. Because the commander-in-chief of Zhao clan's army is here. It was Zhao Jinyu who was wearing his war mask. He said he is the one who got temporarily assigned as their army's commander-in-chief. When Zhao Jinyu was about to give his command to everyone, someone interrupted him. Those were the Zhao clan soldiers. One asked Zhao Jinyu if he is kidding. He looks down on Zhao Jinyu asking him who the hell is he. Zhao Jinyu told them to hold on. He got the commander token. Zhao Jinyu put his hand on his pocket to show them the token, but suddenly a soldier grabbed Zhao Jinyu by collar. He arrogantly asked Zhao Jinyu that Zhao Jinyu isn't even showing his face. Who will dare to put their life in his hand when they are out on the battlefield? Moreover, aren't all the people behind Zhao Jinyu as barbarians? Suddenly someone grabbed that soldiers from the back. That was a barbarian soldier who come with Zhao Jinyu. 
He asked that Zhao Clan soldier to don't dare to be rude to their commander. That Zhao Clan soldier asked that barbarian what did he said, that barbarian is Tuo Ba Wang, early stage of the Dan realm. Tuo Ba Wang told that soldier that he is speaking too loudly. He told that soldier to keep in mind that he is speaking with a great person. When Zhao Jinyu looks at the, he was certain that this situation was going to happen as he expected. Zhao Jinyu. Remember the time when Zhao Jinyu first time commanded the Zhao clan's army? One should always establish their power first when commanding people. It was the same with barbarians when Zhao Jinyu first become their commander. He took away Tao Wu's teeth. Zhao Jinyu always have to do this first. This is so troublesome. He feel like going home to sleep. Another Zhao clan soldier get the formation of attacking and ask Tuo Ba Wang to stop it. He said, how dare barbarian act so presumptuous. Tuo Ba Wang looks at that soldier with a serious face. And then he told Lan Zhe to don't kill anyone. A knife was on the soldier's neck. It was a barbarian. Lan Zhe early stage of the Dan realm. Lan Zhe told Tuo Ba Wang to don't worry because he is just playing around. However, these commissioned officers level is somehow disappointing. When Zhao Jin Yu attacked the witch clan, Tuo Ba Wang and Lan Zhe left quite a good impression on Zhao Jin Yu. Later on, Zhao Jin Yu specially cultivated them. Zhao clan soldier was too nervous. He was thinking, how is it possible he didn't notice Lan Zhe's presence at all? Suddenly, someone attacked Lan Zhe with a spear. Lan Zhe's dodged his attack. He let go off that soldier. Lan Zhe jumped at the soldiers who were attacking him with spear. He told them that they are too slow. He cut down the soldier's spear and a pair informs of him. Lan Zhe told Tuo Ba Wang to keep a good eye on the person he caught. That soldier who Tuo Ba Wang was holding was very angry. He hide a knife in his shoes. That soldier attacked Tuo Ba Wang with it. But to his surprise, Tuo Ba Wang grabbed his knife only with his two fingers. Zhao Jinyu gives signal to Tuo Ba Wang and Lan Zhe to stop playing and come back. Both of them get on their knees in front of Zhao Jinyu. Zhao Jinyu looks at those soldiers angrily and asks them if he they talk properly now. He asked Zhao Clan's soldiers step up who are still dissatisfied when no one comes out. Zhao Jinyu said to them that, from now onwards, those who disobey the order will be chopped into pieces. On the other side, Mu Luo Shui was also there in a carriage. One of her soldiers told Mu Luo Shuo to remember not to come out of the random and let her know if there's any problem. Mu Luo Shui remember Minister Huang telling her that she will be sitting in the carriage until the time comes. Otherwise, she will attract too much attention in the army. He will arrange an attendant for her. Mu Luo Shui looks at her hand mirror and was wondering how Yuan Ji is doing right now. Will it be all right to have her substitute placed in Mu Luoxue's stead and act sick in the house? Of all times, she need to go to the Hidden Immortal Summit right now. She was worried that there won't be any problem on her husband's side, will it be? However, she know that, as long as she can obtain the Dragon Gate's ingredients, primary fetus, and also that treasure, which is related to the legendary Ancestral Spring Clan, then even if the worst scenario happens, she will have the ability to rescue her husband. She smiles and said, Husband, just wait for me. On the Emperor's side, Ji Ru Yuan, Bai Chuan, Chun Yangzi, and Mu Jin were standing. Bai Chuan looks at Zhao Clan's army and said to Ji Ru Yuan that there seems to be some kind of commotion on that side. Ji Ru Yuan told her that he heard that the Zhao Clan's army changed their commander in charge in the last minutes, so he can ignore it. Bai Chuan, in slow voice, asked Ji Ru Yuan if he is really going to do as Ji Zing he says. If he is unwilling, Bai Chuan can help him. Ji Ru Yuan told him that the most important thing right now is to deal with the calamity. Ji Ru Yuan knows that Emperor has contributed significantly to governing the country. Unfortunately, his paranoia has become too serious. He told Bai Chuan that they will take one step at a time. At least there's still hope within the imperial family. Ji Ru Yuan looks at front and told Bai Chuan that it's starting. 